What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Sometimes on Sundays podcast, track number 16. Today we have a very special guest. He is a dear friend of ours. He is the host of the Blessed Life University podcast. And he is also a practicing attorney at law. Please help us welcome Mr. Brian Tierney. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's oh, good? We were supposed to have the audio clap already hitting for the crowd. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There it is. There it is. What's going on, brother? How are you? Oh, man, thank you, everybody, uh, for the warm welcome. Holy <laughs> shit, fucking applause, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we uh, up to, we got I didn't know you could break. fit a crowd this size in the basement to be down here clapping, doing that, yeah, but that's yeah. fucking... Yeah, this is cool. usually filmed in front of a live studio audience, so... Um, <laughs> I'm glad it's not, because I looked in that uh, monitor right in front of us. We can see the <laughs> camera. And I'm like, Do I look chubby? Am I sitting up straight? Like, does the shirt man. a little too tight? Yeah, no, you look yeah. good. You look Thanks. Good. I, yeah. I, I look a little better standing up, I think. Uh, maybe a little slimmer. Like, uh, <laughs> my weight loss gains show a little bit better. You know, it seems to all collect down in the... It happens, see. We're up on some... The midsection. Yeah, I upgraded my uh, my shirt so it doesn't show as much. Yeah, so. Oh, dude, you look like... He looks like he's got that fresh, clean tea or classic teas now where you like yeah, yeah. fucking... That, I went to that exact site. Clean yeah. tea and all that. Is that yeah. where that's from? That well, fucking... Built, actually. B-Y-L-T. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was checking that one out, too. Like I, I got some fresh, clean teas. They were all right. Yeah. Built looks yeah. good. Built, yeah. They're, yeah, they're dope. So I got them from our birthday gift, so... You know. Nice. Fuck, man. I think, uh, you know, with the classic teas, the clean teas, fresh clean teas, whatever. It's like we're reinventing the dad bod here, dog. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. like, we're doing big things. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? I started eating that Eat Clean Chicago from Berwyn. How is that? Fucking meals are great. And uh, they're real good, man. And um, yeah, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But it helps keep me slim and taking all sorts of vitamins and shit. Just trying to stay healthy. I'll probably after this is over, get home and fucking exercise. I was standing in the... Uh, the line for Dunkin' Donuts, and I'm standing there, and I'm like, "Ooh, I, I'm fucking stiff, man." I'm like, "I'm like doing this shit." And I was like, "They don't even notice I'm standing there anyway." So I'm like, "Fucking doing yoga, basically yeah, shit." Yeah. They got their backs turned, I'm fucking stretching or whatever. And uh, finally, you know, they they notice me. I'm like, "Jesus, this is all the exercise I've had today." So um, probably I'll get back, do some yoga, lift some weights at the house, just kind of chill, get some work done for the week ahead. Um, one thing that's good for me though now is that. I got this new attorney, Matt, uh, practicing with me. I, he's like a brother from another mother. We went to law school together. We lived together for a while because, you know, I had a one-bedroom friggin' studio apartment thing or whatever, and they kept on raising the rent every year. And I'm like, we could get a, you know, a two-bedroom, too bad for cheaper per person per month, you know. So I lived with a guy for a while, and I don't trust a lot of people. You know, I'm not, I don't click with a lot of people. But when we were going to law school, we'd be at these parties and shit. And this guy would be the one putting on, like, Biggie and Pac. So I knew that was my fucking guy right yeah, there, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to go talk to this guy, man. We got the same musical taste and all this shit. But, uh, yeah, he keeps me accountable a little bit. We work out together, you know, whole fucking thing. But um, I don't want to, like, <laughs> dive too deep into my shit, man. I haven't seen you guys in a little bit. I was figuring, like, what's what's going on to you? Everybody good, man? Oh, it's been good, man. We, we've we had some pretty good guests on. I mean, I wasn't able to interview one of them. But we've had some pretty good guests, you know. Um, like you, trying to get back into working out, man. Just dad life, and it's hard to make time. It, yeah, dude. Like, and I know he was like, "Oh, you can make time," and it's an excuse. Like, no, I'm fucking tired. Yeah. I don't want to do shit when I get home, too. But yeah, I like you. I gotta, I gotta get back into working out, man. Like, we're at that point where, you know, if you don't start taking care of it, it's gonna get pretty bad. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. health wise. Yeah, I barely have time. Like work podcast kids right the whole nine the house it's like yeah this is like there's always something to do that's never true ends. never fucking ends i was just at woodhaven this uh this this friday and saturday cleaning out a never-ending checklist of bullshit yeah it's uh life seems to become a game of whack-a-mole right as you get older people are like whack-a-mole what's that <laughs> fucking three stooges 1930 shit you're talking about yeah 
Well, oh. it's like, hey kids, have you ever been to fucking uh, like an amusement place, like haunted trailers or something? They have this game where yep. moles pop out and you hit one, and then another one pops up from somewhere else. It's like, I'm, I'm sure George, as soon as he fig- finishes one project on the house, and it's another thing, and that's how Hans treats his sex life. <laughs> the whack a mole, much. Yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> like as many moles. As well, as long as something's popping up, you're in good shape. <laughs> You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if it's coming from a different spot nowadays or whatever. No, it's been, yeah. It's life. Life now is a lot different than. It's hectic, man. Yeah. I I wonder if it's like more because we're in like near the city, right? Yeah. Because you because you because you go out like in the sticks, farm farm. You know, there's farms out there and all that, and it just seems like it's really chill. I don't know. I feel yeah, like it you're is. still going to have it, though. You're still going to have is. tons of shit to do. Yeah, yeah, but it seems like it's, like, slower paced. Oh, well, for 100% certain, man. I can testify, man. Fucking, <clears throat> I we have a family home in the north woods of Wisconsin, way up north. It's about a six and a half hour drive if you're responsible and you get out and take a break every hour and a half, whatever. And uh, it's so peaceful. I mean, the air is fresh. There's less people around. Um, when I go there... I have to be very conscious about checking my Chicago energy before I get there because people move at a different pace there. And, like, if you come with that loud fucking, you know, walking in somewhere quick, like you want results right away, they're going to be like, motherfucker, you need to slow down, right? Or they're going to be on edge right away. So I'm yeah. one thing that I've become very conscious about in my life is controlling energy, my own and other people's. And usually I can control other people's through my own. And if I can't, then i got to keep an eye on those fucking crazy motherfuckers or whatever, right? <coughs> but uh, bless you. Salud, mi amigo. Um, <laughs> but uh, get it out, brother. Get it out. Around, yeah, the moment I was probably the vaccine got him doing that mm-hmm. shit. I had real bad allergies after I got that shit. Wintertime allergies. Never had them in my life. But whatever, anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's definitely different in the small towns, man. Like, uh, pe- first of all, people know each other. And, um, you know, everybody knows each other. It's a very small place. And then, you know, you got to fucking watch, like, you know, your energy and stuff. Because right. it is, it's... It's a different pace. Like here, it's just the sheer volume of people. Like, it's like inflation with money, I feel like. The more of them you have, the less valuable they seem. And I'm not saying that's the case because I'm the biggest believer that like, human beings are the greatest resource, right? We're good people. We're, we're, you know, I'm trying to trying to promote, you know, goodness within people and kindness and all this. But um, here, there's just so many people that it's like, they're just an obstacle. Like you're trying to get past them or like get out of my way you know what i mean or you're focused on your goal like i got to be there at nine right like this is what we we're just talking about yeah. complications of adult life right yeah. like do you feel pressure to be like starting work like on the minute and everything yeah yeah especially when you work for um the asian community well no yeah they're they're pretty on point my my korean overlords will uh or they're looking for me to be on time with a korean lot of overlords yeah <laughs> who do you work for uh, a tech company. A tech company? Yeah, based out of Korea. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, they're on, aren't they like six hours time difference from us? Or? Yeah, but they, there's a lot of checks and balances with them, man. Like, at least the way we operate, uh, like, everything's got to be documented. You know, what are you doing? What time have you started? What time are you getting out? How long you were here? You know, what did you do when you were there? Like, just bam, 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 bam. Jesus. Yeah. like it's an not... extra level of stress on it, doing your fucking job. Yeah, right? and sometimes it's just like, you yeah. want to be able, like, I'm good at what I do, um, but you just want to be able to do your gig and not be bothered with, like, having to worry about that time, you know, and just a little bit more freedom of autonomy, but it is what it is. It's still a good gig. I like it. I like Can you imagine it. these people, when you said, what's the time difference there, you said? Oh, I don't know what the time difference is. I just know that. You said Hans, six hours. Oh, wait, who said that? You did. I don't don't know, I was guessing. (laughs) Can you tell us what the time difference is between America and... uh, I'm sure it's close to 12 hours. Because, I mean, China's out there. Isn't it? It's like on the other side of the world. So, yeah. So, it's got to be like 12, right? It'll be half of a day. Well... Japan is definitely 12 hours. Okay. So, it's got to be at least 12 or 10 hours. Okay, it's 10 to 12 hours. Let's just say for the sake of the conversation, because we're probably right, right? We're just reasoning this out. Um, Can you imagine these motherfuckers are over there, like... About, like, they should be in bed, but they're up yelling at your ass or something like that. Yeah. Like, you didn't get the fucking TPS reports in. Whoa, take it easy. TPS reports. Or whatever, right? No, yeah, know. it's like that sometimes. They like want... in fucking office, the office looks space. Like we took the under on it. Uh, they're 15 hours. Uh, 15 hours. Wow. Oh, all right. Oh, man. Yeah, they're, they, uh, they're very on top of things, man. <clears throat> very on top of Very organized, very... 
very exact. Like everything is checked. They're fucking honorable people, man. I tutored a Korean kid in law school, great kid. And I had a couple of Korean friends. They were all like among the best students and they were very disciplined, just good people. Yeah, absolutely. They're Yeah, North yeah. Koreans could be like that. <laughs> well, I didn't know any North Koreans. These are <laughs> South Koreans. Um, oh, yeah, South yeah. Koreans. But um he told me, this dude told me that um I want to make sure I turn off my alarm so it's not ringing while we're on the thing. I usually set them. You know, you're getting old when you're setting alarms to take your vitamins and shit like that. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like I want to make sure I get both doses in today, the fish oil or whatever the fuck, right? Anyway, um, they have two years required military service after you graduate high school just so people can kind of like work in a cohesive environment, team, and just kind of learn what, you know, service, in, you know, for your country is about. And I, I don't think we have that here in America because, you know, slavery has been outlawed. And I think they would consider, you know, military service or mandatory military service for a couple years after high school as like a form of slavery. Um, I think they should definitely make encourage it and, and um, not be, to use the United States forces for like a, a force of bad, but just for the benefit of the youth, because uh you know, I was just watching Rogan's podcast recently and on Dr. Phil, and they were talking about how far we are behind as a country in terms of education and how COVID magnified that. So that's something maybe we could touch on a little bit more as we go. But um, in any event, South Korea has, you know, military mandatory military service after and And my guy told me it seemed like a very positive thing for him to have. I think it would benefit us a lot. I, I Like, there was a point in time in the country where, if you were if you committed a crime, you were either going to go to jail or you chose you can go to the military, and excuse, and get away from the the time served part of it all. And a lot of those guys came out reformed by doing that as opposed to going to prison and falling into that entire system. So I think there's something to be said about the discipline of joining the military, whether it be forced or being optional. But there is a de- decline in, in the number of applicants that they're seeing uh, for sure for all the armed yeah. forces. So. Um, yeah, to your point, we are falling behind in a lot of different things. And you know what? Maybe having criminals go into the military wouldn't be such a bad thing. Like, if you're a criminal, you're probably a bit aggressive by nature. Like, isn't that what we want from our armed forces? You're going to yeah. go and fuck these guys up? Yeah, you know I mean? absolutely. Steal from me. Steal on my block. <laughs> Not on my block. You know what I mean? Like, get them. <laughs> All these aggressive thugs and stuff out yeah. there. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Like... You know, it's funny how you get, when you get older, like, you know, we know all this, dude. We were, there, I can't, I couldn't imagine the amount of testosterone that was in fucking St. Joseph High School when we went there, right? Like, we had Massive. balls on us since fucking freshman year. You, you had to watch out, like, that you wouldn't get into it, right? And, like, here's the difference. When we're younger, you're almost like, you feel so good, so young, so strong. Your cardio is just up naturally. Even if you're not working out, you can go for fucking days, right? Back then, you're kind of looking for it. You're like, man, I miss your motherfucker. Boy, trying to fuck uh, with me, dude. Yeah. I got my fucking hooks ready. Yeah. Now you're kind of like you pass a guy in the street, and you're like, hey, how are you? Try to make peace so you don't have to fuck this guy up or hope that you don't get fucked up in a street fight. And I'm like, <laughs> like I got to go home and do crunches. I can't take anybody on right now. Back then, I was doing them. I'm like, I can't well, do the, that. I was going to say, d- depend on your... I got to do... Oh, forget about that. I gotta go. I gotta go do laundry. Yeah. <laughs> I got to do, this guy's making peace. I, I would fight. fuck your ass up right now if I didn't have to do laundry. <laughs> yeah, man. Dude, yeah, that's all we had to worry about then. Maybe George is on that Karate Kid shit though. Maybe folding laundry is how he gets his chi and shit. And he's like fucking <laughs> fuck you up with a Brazilian arm lock he learned from fucking folding laundry and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Things to do, man. Got train somehow. <laughs> fuck, dude. I mean. Laundry is self care. I don't know if people think about it that way, but think about that shit, bro. Like, you know, my wife, if she fucking sees the fucking pair of clothes twice, she throws it in the wash. I'm like, you didn't shit in those pants, did you? No, well, I think you're good. You probably don't need to wash them right away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or whatever. Because, like, me, like, I take care of my drawers and shit, you know, but it's like, if I didn't, if I didn't mess up my pants or something, I'm fucking not washing them every single day and shit or whatever. Yeah, you don't want them but, getting faded. No, fuck no, dude. And I'm super cautious about all that shit. I use cold water all the time because I'm not trying to shrink anything. If it's something I like, like a shirt with a logo on there or whatever, I'll put it, I'll just, I'll hang it up on a hanger, dude. I'll just hang it from the fucking shower curtain or whatever. It dries. Like by the morning, it's dry. Like even thicker, you know, garments like a sweater or some shit. Right. Same thing. It's like, dude, I'm not trying to abuse the shit out of them. 
Water is a destructive force, goddammit. You add in some of that shit that will take oil that fucking gone out to the ducks off of fucking the ducks in the Gulf when the fucking had the oil spill, and you're going to put that shit on your clothes? Dog, I'm trying to stay <laughs> fresh, bro. You can, get, you can get stuff to make your clothes smell good without fucking beating them to shit in a fucking machine that fucking spins them around and shit and heats them up to a fucking 100,000 degrees, right? What is it that uh, that uh, dryer sheets do to your clothes? I think they, they, they like... You're supposed like, to soften weaken. them. Yeah. No, 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 no. But I mean, there's like an adverse effect. Supposedly, there's like wool balls that you can throw in your dryer, and it's supposed to be better for your clothes and your skin and shit. I got wool balls. <laughs> <laughs> that must be itchy, bro. <laughs> that you true? got some wool balls. Apparently, he told me he shaved earlier, so they might have <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Jesus. You We're know. just stones now. <laughs> Shaving's a weird fucking thing because, like, you get that first few days where, you know, you're smooth as a baby. And then you get that period where it starts fucking itching and irritating the shit. Like, fuck. You know what I mean? I just cleaned up. You know, like, man, now I'm paying the price. Uh, yeah, you're trying to fight not to scratch in public. And it's like, uh, trying to it out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Anything for pussy, I suppose. Yeah, you don't want them <laughs> Korean seeing you fucking scratching yourself on the Zoom or whatever, dog. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> well, I mean, that's why you you dishonored us. Up here. You can just scratch all you want. Like, right now I'm scratching my balls and nobody's going to notice. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you direct my visual attention to that shit, Hans? You could have fucking it said it without fucking showing me. Hey, this is all I grabbed my shit. <laughs> like, this ain't St. Joe's. We're not trying to look at dick anymore, motherfucker. <laughs> Got away from that shit 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, dude, 20 years ago, bro. I mean, think about that shit, bro. Like, shit. they're talking about 2023 and elections, all that shit. Motherfucker, we've been out of high school for almost 20 years, man. Thank God for modern medicine and shit, bro. Motherfuckers was dead already, bro. Back, back in the day, when people didn't live that long, like our grandparents or great-grandparents, they'd have black lung by the time they were fucking 35 or 36. They'd get another five, six years, and then they had some kids that went on to live longer. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> fuck, man, we're lucky, you know, we're, we're still going pretty strong. There's there's so much advances and shit coming out between CRISPR, gene editing, stem cell therapy, like, it goes on and on, like, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a good time, uh, in some senses, of course, because, like, we're over here talking about all the shit fucking corporate America forces on us and shit, right? Like the fucking dryer sheets. Some asshole's making money to fucking ruin your clothes or whatever. But you keep on buying them. You got the little bear in the commercial. Oh, buy the fucking dryer yeah. sheets from the 1980s and shit. Remember yeah, that snuggle like bear? medicine. There's no yeah, money like in the care. Get the vaccine. Do the take fucking dryer like sheets. Oh, now day. you got this going on. You got to take something else to fight that little side effect. And then you got this going on. You got to take this other thing. Yeah. I didn't know there were so many <laughs> parallels in the laundry business to healthcare. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, Pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Don't get me started. You know me. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, it's like like George says, right? This one, you know, it'll help with the blood pressure, um, but you'll need this one to stop the anal bleeding afterward. You know, and <laughs> they got you covered though. They got something for everything. Yeah. Meanwhile, all you gotta do is just go fucking eat less and work out and yeah. get some good sleep. No, yeah, no, no, you're no, right. No, 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 no. Just take the pill. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean so you got to do easier. all of it. Come on. You got to do all of it, but they all complement each other. Apparently, one of the few ways that we as human beings can like regenerate our own stem cells is by exercise. So it's like you got to fucking do that shit, you know. Make yeah, time, George. All time, bro. I I hear you, man. But like, wh when do you like to work out? In the morning or the evening? I like to work out in the evening, actually. Yeah, but like, I don't. I don't like doing it in the like weightlifting or cardio or what do you? Yeah, like? I do a little bit of everything. I got, I do weights. I do the uh, the treadmill. I'll I'll hit the bag. Well, first of all, it probably feels good, right? Like, don't you feel good as fuck when you oh, yeah. take a good yeah. shower, dude? Yeah, you need to. Sometimes I, I turn it on cold at the end, like, like as, almost as cold as it could get. Yeah. I don't know if it was some comedian <clears throat> or who the fuck it was, but they told their kid, they're like, turn on the shower on cold at the end and stand in it for 15 seconds. That way, if you get stabbed in a prison fight, you know what feel like going sh into shock feels like in case you need to keep on fighting for 15 seconds. Or something. What the fuck? I don't know if it really makes sense. What kind of sense, comparison but it's is cool. that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't want to know like, what, it, what it feels like dying in a shower. <laughs> yeah. So you can keep on fighting while you're used to the feeling or some or, fucking thing. I don't know. there once and kind but of want to go back. <laughs> I guess the less drastic version of that would just be that you're getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. Oh, see, no. I start cold. I, start I like cold. to just jump in. Yeah, Fuck, it, I usually it, warm only after time. shower, after workout though. Like I usually like hot, hot showers, but if I work out, I gotta I gotta wash up. You want some cold water, man? You gotta cool down. It, dude, it feels good, man. It really does. It's super refreshing. Like I always feel like extra fresh now when I do the cold at the end. It's like I've been cleansed. I throw on some deodorant, some fucking you know 
cologne or whatever. And I just feel like, like extra life gave fresh. You a and my sense of smell is better and shit. I'm like, oh, fresh is a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Just feeling good. I, I got all my own fucking products picked out now, all the shit I like to use. I personally like to work out in the morning um, for at least for cardio. Because I feel like if I start doing fucking cardio, treadmill, um, calisthenics or whatever in the evening, I, I can't get to sleep, dude. My blood's going. I'm like... You know, yeah, you can't up. do it right before bed, man. No, I can't. You got a couple either. hours, probably. You could do it. Maybe I'll hit the bag like around six, five, six o'clock. Um, sometimes maybe a little later, but any farther than that, it just gets a little dicey, bro. Like when we were younger, it's like you could go on no sleep at all, and now you're just you value the sleep so much, or at least I do. I do. Yeah. I need the sleep. Otherwise, yeah, I'm not. I need. I'm sleep. not functioning well at all if I'm not sleeping. I'm. Need- I'm. I'm pretty sure you all. You all sleep more than i do i i don't sleep very well I, how many hours a night do you sleep the most i'll sleep is six if yeah. i go seven i can't I, like i'm waking up with a headache I, I, sure. I, I or 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 just i can't i can't get to seven hours i kind of six hours and no more i kind of get that like i can't oversleep either <clears throat> um i always end up waking up early every day like so normally my for like a normal work day it's like between 4 30 and 5 o'clock in the morning i'm waking up even on so weekend, fucking early dude yeah even on a weekend, I'm still waking up at like 6 a.m. Dude, He's you're going to be retired guy. and fucking waking up at like your body's already fucked. You know, like retirees get up at like 4 or 5 oh, in the yeah. morning. He's already on that program. He's yeah. That, yeah. He's on that <laughs> it's good to wake up early, though. I like waking up early. Yeah, I don't mind. Like, I don't I love mind waking it. up early. Yeah, right. same here for sure. I enjoy I, it. Here's the thing. I wish I could sleep more, like, but I physically can't. I cannot. It doesn't matter what I do. If like, I have an edible before bed, something, anything. Doesn't matter. I I never sleep past six hours. I hear meth helps you sleep for long periods. Of Thank time. you for that. <laughs> yeah, after like seventy two hours of straight being away, that you crash. The greatest sleep you'll ever have. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> for three Your body's straight. trying to make sure it doesn't die while you like lay there, probably, <laughs> and then you wake up later. Oh, this is very refreshing. Yeah, you yeah. suffer thirty six hours after you fucking stayed up for seventy two or whatever that shit does. Gave out the secret, huh? It's now pharmaceuticals gonna Wait. jump on it. Meth. Yeah, the key Just to great once, sleep. Yeah, to <laughs> yeah. Fi- 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 Pfizer Mectin, <laughs> Pfizer Mectin. Yeah. They got the Pfizer version out now. You get more good sleep. Take Pfizer Mectin. This one brought to you by Pfizer Biontech. May cause increased heart rate. May cause blah blah blah. Yeah, uh, diarrhea, diarrhea, fucking Ugh. fatigue and death. But, but the American diet gets some diarrhea, patients, bro. Some patients need... experience death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, experience death. Uh, did they take a survey afterward to tell them how that went? Check with your doctor about taking. Your yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The yeah, guy's just there. He's all wired for three days in the commercial. <laughs> Then he's finally sleeping. I saw this commercial about meth. Should I take it? Like, no. <laughs> he's getting arrested by the police. <laughs> Shit. And, and this is one of the topics that I emailed about kind of ties in with that. With the um, And we'll get to probably that a little bit more later as well. Is, um, you know, the amount of fucking problems with meth and like fentanyl and shit, you know. It's increasing. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a whole other thing. But um, I guess to maybe circle back on a fucking more positive note. You know, I'll, I'll lift weights in the evening, and then I'm eating those Eat Clean meals from right here in Berwyn, support local business, um, Eat Clean Chicago, and the nice thing is I just don't feel like I have to take a nasty shit in the morning when I wake up, you know, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you get stomach aches. Like, no somebody, grease in like, it. Oh. oh. Well, just like when you get greasy-ass food, you wake up, and you're like, oh, I got the bubble guts, you're like... I don't know if I'll be starting at my nine this morning. I, think I thought you were going to start with something positive. This is. <laughs> <laughs> I am, motherfucker. I said it. It makes clear that you don't have like bubble guts in the morning when you eat the clean food. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I hear you. I was on the way over here and I passed by Zaka Tacos and I'm like, I'm fucking craving some Zaka Tacos right now. Mm. I'm going to get two or three of those bad bitches when I get out of here and just. That Throw like some that. salsa verde on we'll there. Do some yoga while you're eating the taco and shit. I mean, tacos first, probably. You know what I mean? Why not both? They need more. <laughs> it gets messy, dude. I try to eat while I'm driving and shit. You know how hard that is. You get shit all over your nice clothes. You're like, fuck. Well, that's and why you, you gotta do something. it like the downward dog pose, so that way you don't get it on your clothes. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. You give me too much credit, man. <laughs> that was, that'd be a possibility. I'm flexible as fuck. Um, you know. <clears throat> Sounds like a. Start of a business right there. They need more eat clean places like that, but like there's a ton of them out there. Drive Taco through, through oh, drive yeah, through that'd style. Dope. That'd be dope. You, you know, because they don't. You, yeah, because everybody's always on the go. Yeah, you know, for me, I'm I 
it's very hard for me to just stop and sit down and eat or whatever. Then you got to heat the shit up. If yeah. I can just get it through a drive through eat it in my car real quick, clean meal. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be cool enough just to be able to get like a drive through clean meal service that you can just bring back and then just throw it in the microwave or whatever. Um, Because the way I usually do it is like, if, if it's a sandwich, I get like the breakfast sandwich, fucking delicious from there. It's got cheddar, bacon, um, a whole egg, grilled onions, and this like little peppery sauce they put on there. So goddamn good. Is that thick cut bacon? And I'll toast the friggin' bun first, or if I have a toaster, like if I'm at home, I'll just fucking toast the whole thing at once in a little toaster oven. You're making me hungry, dude. I'm telling you, but so I don't mind the heating it up part, cause that if I take it back, or you know, if it's a regular meal, I'll put it like two and a half minutes, right? I take it out of the plastic. I don't want to be eating the shit or trying to microwave plastic. That's a bad idea, I think. So I fucking put it on a plate, wrap it with some paper towels so it doesn't spatter, fucking doesn't overheat or get, you know, all messed up. And they're fucking perfect, man. Be cool if you could get them heated, but I would take it either way, you know. Fresh yeah, I just think about all those people that are on the go. They got to stop at all those fast food places. Yeah, you want it ready to go, you know. Yeah. That'd be ideal. Don't have access to a microwave like on the way home or to, you know, your place of business, whatever. Man, you know. Probably be. Even, even feeding your kids. Why not, get, you know, yeah. give them a clean meal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe the, nuggets, right? How about like, like, little breast, right? Chicken breast. Yeah. Little broccoli. Yeah. Little cheese. Yeah. I, Who doesn't I, like that? I was thinking about the starting a restaurant where it was just like you know steak and chops, like just come <clears> quick, <throat> lean protein with some fucking shit on yeah. the side. You want a chicken breast? We got a chicken breast. Whatever. Yeah. You know. Um, I mean that wouldn't be as tasty for the kids, but the thing about fast food is fuck those kids. First of all, <laughs> well, you can make it tasty. You can make some tasty ass chicken breast. Yeah, you can, can for sure, dude. That, yeah. the, the the meals I eat are proof of all seasoning. You know. Yeah. They it's can make beyond meat. Nerd. They can make the fucking meal taste good. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with those. I'd, I'd take the regular thing. But uh, who was talking about that last time? Sully, right? What the yeah, cool next door? Oh, yeah, oh. oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, you know what? I would try those. I want to try it. I want to see what it's like because I'm just the curiosity is just getting the best of me. Your mic's not on. Yeah. Curi- curiosity is just getting the best of me with those things. Those Beyond Meat and I haven't tried them, but I heard vegan. Rogan pepper. was talking about a study where apparently they use some oils in there that may like increase risks of cancer or oh, something fucking everything's thing. fucking cancer risk well because right it's they're trying to make it they use like i guess plant compounds and different shit and they're trying to make it taste like actual meat you know oh gotcha but i think what they're saying is that in the future they might be able to make like a synthetic meat <clears throat> and it's just like they can basically grow tissue without having to fucking kill cows and shit that would be wild but uh who knows would man. you eat it I mean, yeah, if it's safe, you know, if it fucking shit. That's the thing, it, we don't really If it know, tastes as good as regular never, food, you know. They say that the food that we get already is safe to eat. <laughs> is it? I don't know. Um, see, the thing well, is... Well, the, the, the company says it's safe. It might chip, right. it might chip away at us, you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> over time, just like, you don't feel all bad at once, but like, you wouldn't have gotten colon cancer had you not eaten that way your whole fucking life or something like that. Yeah. And then you just get hit with it at like 60, 70 years old. Like, fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't know. You know, I guess. I don't know. But um, I feel like, um, you know, okay, so first of all, the meals I eat are like 11 bucks on average or 11.30, something like that. And you can't it's even. not bad. It's not because you can't really even go to like a fast food restaurant and spend that much. It's 11 bucks per meal? On average, right? Because I get a, I get a fifteen meal pack, so you divide it up, and it's like eleven something. But dude, when I'm going to McDonald's now, I spend like ten bucks, dude. Burger King is expensive. Though. Yeah. Or taco place, dude. Tacos like where they have good steak and shit. That's that's like four dollars a taco now. You for get three tacos, coffee. you're over. You're no, at twelve bucks. Coffee, you know what's yeah, really plus a fucking bothers me is horchata or something. Jimmy John's is expensive, man. They're not that good. They either. used to be like five six bucks a sandwich or dude, something. Dude, yeah, I get you know a sandwich. Sometimes I go th- I go there with my kids. They're fire though. Fucking. Yeah. I'm spending forty bucks. Damn, for, that's for what I'm saying. Sandwiches and, and a drink. It's expensive now to fucking take a family. It's out. inflation. Yeah, it is inflation. Yeah. yeah. The only thing is with the fucking fast food restaurants, I feel like they're kind of like Instagram hoes. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, you ever see the pictures of their food? Like, I went at Arby's. I was on the way home, fucking on the road, a road trip or Never whatever. The same. And I grabbed the fucking Arby's. Uh, what was it? The that new sandwich they got out, the brisket one. And like you see in the picture, like, God damn, bro, that looks like that fucking uh, barbecue house fucking you got brisket. One right of there. the ugliest Instagram hoes if you're going to Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been to Arby's once in my life. You know, I, you know what? I don't know if it's a Mexican thing. I don't know if this is the last time. The last time I've been to an Arby's. Because it's yeah, not real. I've been beef, there once. I don't think. 
I'm kidding. Yeah. Who knows? That the fucking regular. But it was it good. Did you, like, did you enjoy it? Yeah, the sandwich was actually really good. It didn't look <coughs> good. like that it looked like. You know, the fucking bun looked like it wilted in the sun for a while or some fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. And then the fucking meat was like, you know, you expected to see like a fresh cut brisket type of thing. And it looked like that synthetic ass shit they use on their regular uh, beef sandwiches. Like when they're slicing it off, it's like, hmm, I've had a really good Italian beef before and I know what fucking real beef is made out of. Like, I'm not sure if these are the same things, yeah. but it still tastes good, you know? <laughs> you got Once in a while. I Maybe. But I tell you what, they didn't fuck me in Wisconsin. They know how to treat people right around there. They'll hold you over coals for everything. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Sunday, and we're heading back. And I tell the guy, I'm like, yeah, let me get a, let me get two regular beefs and fucking, you know, the brisket sandwich. He goes, we got fucking regular beefs for for $10 because it's the Green Bay Packers game today. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I was like, fucking go back, bro. Give me some fucking, uh, yeah. give me Packers some today. four for 10, dude. Hell yeah, I'll be munching on these motherfuckers when I arrive home at about seven. You know what I mean? A little Arby's sauce and some cheddar on that shit. <laughs> Fucking A, bro. I went to Kentucky this year, and I got to say, their food is fantastic, bro. Fan fucking thing. And what they do is, they'll, a lot of places will be, like, they'll buy a house, and they'll make they'll make it into a restaurant. So you get to these restaurants, and they look like houses. That's so a thing weird. in the South. Yeah. That's a thing in I the South. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So I went out there. There was this place called the Grail House. If, you, if anybody's ever... In, in Louisville, go to the Grail House. The Grail House? It's fucking amazing. Yeah, and the price? Oh, fuck. Like, it's so cheap. Uh, in Kentucky? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what I had. I forgot what I had. I had uh, I had biscuits and gravy with oh, sausage oh, shit. and shit. Like, it was like, eggs. Oh, shit. It was, it was the best brunch I've ever had in my life. Oh, man. Weird, though. Like, because you pull up and you're like, where's the fucking... They don't even have signs sometimes. It's just on the door. Yeah. You're just like, what the fuck? Dude, there's nothing I love more than going to those like small mom and pop <clears throat> places when you're out of town, dude. Ah, uh, dude. But that food was that didn't have mom and pop flavor. That was some upper echelon. Type no shit. shit. Everything made from scratch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was yeah, it was locally uh purchased and all that. Grown and all that. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like some gourmet shit, son. It was. It was son. fucking fantastic. If you guys ever get out there, Louisville, Grail House. Dude. Grail House, Louisville, Kentucky. You probably do a lot of good shit down there. So now we're all the fucking uh, bourbons made down there and shit too. Yeah, yeah. No, the Tennessee, Tennessee whiskey. Well, there is Tennessee whiskey, but the fucking Kentucky's got like oh yeah, they, they got the Jim yeah, Beam and some of those other ones. Yeah, because Tennessee's got Jack Daniels, mm -hmm. and then Kentucky's got a lot of bourbon down there, man. Yeah, they know how to do shit right. Moonshine. Man. Moonshine. Ever had moonshine? I had a Puerto Rican moonshine when I was in Puerto Rico. Go white lightning. Doesn't yeah, take, doesn't take much, yeah. right? No, it doesn't take take much, and it's not really tasty. I mean, because you know they're making them in bathtubs or whatever. For real, you I don't know if real or moonshine. Dude. You really gotta watch it with that shit. <laughs> yeah, that's like, a professional, legitimate right there. <laughs> moonshine. I don't know if there's probably not fentanyl bathtub. in there yet, you know, but fuck. They don't make it out in some you know plant. <laughs> if it ain't strong enough, then they'll add the fentanyl. <laughs> I guess it's not like FDA approved, you know. Whatever. They, they were saying a lot. There was a lot of people going <clears> south, <throat> blind in the south. Years ago, because they used to put like Freon in that shit or something. Oh, like that. Cool. yeah. They're getting fucking blind. I don't know. Whatever. I, that's why. But you can't trust anything anymore, whether it comes from a pharmaceutical or a fucking, you know, a bathtub in the fucking Tennessee somewhere. Yeah, you know, you just kind of take your chances. Take yeah. yeah, roll your dice. Um, yeah, no, I had some moonshine before. So there's a Polish moonshine that's very common. You'll see like apple pie or whatever. They they somehow have a way of taking the extremely like strong alcohol like it's like almost it's 200 proof or some fucking crazy like that and it tastes it doesn't even taste bad at all dry your mouth out like in the aftertaste yeah but look at vodka a little bit of that it's made out of potatoes and you will be fucked up <laughs> so i remember um i was uh, hanging out with some of the saint joe's guys back in the day i was at a carnival over here in like brookfield or lions where fucking bald ass hermitage lives or whatever and um and so <clears> one of the guys, yeah what's up Herm? i love you brother you're on your like fourth kid right now I would have never thought with your bald ass you'd have so much fucking fertile seed in you, but God bless you and your family. Fucking take it easy on your wife over there, you fucking savage. You know what I mean? But uh, but uh, anyway, I was hanging out over there, and one of the guys had some moonshine. We mixed it with some fucking vanilla Coke or something like that, you know, and they had that fucking delicious shit. It's like the McRib. They bring it back every few years or whatever. It's going away. 
Man, eh, well, last run. that's Make fine. Fun. It can go away anyway. Last time I had one, they didn't even heat it up. It's like, you got to put some effort in this fucking thing. Put it in yeah, the microwave for a little while. It didn't taste like it used to. <laughs> Those tastes... onions are really strong, too. Like, I, I, last time I ordered it, I ordered it without any onions. And I was like, I'm sure it's going to be great. <laughs> it was still like, you know. George makes enemies at McDonald's. I do. Yes, he does. Oh, man. I can't. <laughs> you know what? Their job is so fucking easy. You should hear the way he talks to him, Brian. It's very. No, I don't. I'm not. It's rude. very, like. You know, here's the thing. I'm disappointed, George. No, here's the thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. To my defense, here's the thing. I will, I will complain about something, right? I'll say, hey, you know, why is this taking so long? Or why do I have to move up to the second window? All I want is a coffee. I feel like Brian's right? already got a rebuttal. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm a listener. Because it's, it's not really. I'm not even complaining. At first, I'm like, you know, what's going on? And then I get attitude. If I get if I get like a, per, a like a nice sweet response and I'm like all right I get it I'll move up I'll, I'll get it right I get it you guys are busy all right I understand but you know then they want to give you sass Man, I don't he know. has these very like intricate custom orders as well no he I, wants things mixed in together and he gets no, pissed off I for not mixing what, in I can together. ask for Mac sauce can I get a double a cheeseburger? cheeseburger but with Gouda cheese <laughs> yeah he gets all, I know. yeah and if he doesn't get that Gouda cheese watch out. Good is great. That so is brisket. That good is. But yeah, good is great. Yeah, I've never had to work in fast food before. I'm very thankful for that. Like, I've worked in all sorts of customer service jobs and shit, and it made me a better person, man. We're I, in customer service. Yeah. We're all in there. We are, right? Because, I mean, there's only two things you can really do. You can make goods, like, you know, fucking this microphone stand, or you can provide a service, which, right. you know, you're an accountant, I'm an attorney, we provide a service. People don't, like, think about that way. Like, oh, yeah, you're right. That there's like when they talk about a service-based economy, it's like even doctors and lawyers and shit are part of that too, you know. Yep. Which we've been hacked down as well with all the student debt and everything you come up with nowadays that you know takes wealth away from people who used to have it in the fucking country or whatever, you know. But um, but uh, where what were we hitting on right before that? You just mentioned. Uh, oh, I interrupted you because of the McRib was coming back. You said you bring it back every. Mm. Well, no, it was something along the lines of what he was just talking about right now. What well, about with the, like customer service? Was, yeah, with the customer service. Yeah, so you know, like I started out. So first of all, I started caddying at age thirteen. I caddied over that Riverside Country Club right there by First Avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Great, great time. You know, it was. Um, <clears throat> I didn't really like golf at the time. I just thought it was like a boring ass thing that mm. white people do or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I still and, think it's boring. Dude, I fucking love it, man. Um, I want to go. Dude, I've never out. been. Yeah, me neither. Dude, there's... I don't well, have the skin tone for that. Well, fuck all that, bro. <laughs> what are you talking like, about? I'm just joking. I, I'm fucking introducing all people to that shit, man. Like, I, you know, I got all people of all different colors and shit to play. And uh, one of my attorney friends from law school gave me a guy, uh, a guy and a girl that do, instru and do instructions. And I want to take instructions. It's like, I got decent, decent national uh, natural ability. But I need to hone that, and the only way you can really do that is talk to these people that were like pro golfers for a while. Like the lady, she's been a pro, she was a pro golfer for like twenty years. She'll tell you where you need to stand, how you need to hold it, where your swing's fucking up, and all this. So I'm gonna do that over the winter, probably like one or two days a month. I'll take a Saturday because it's expensive. It's like uh, sixty bucks a half hour. So if you do a full hour, it's one hundred twenty bucks. But I mean, fuck it. You know, you, you were talking about forty bucks. At, you know, for, at the store now. Yeah. I work hard. At Jimmy John's. And you know what? It's it's a great way to get out there, man. Just like. Part of the thing is, like, I feel like I turn into mashed potatoes in my fucking job because I sit at the desk in the office, I sit at the car, I sit at a real estate closing, my body's just wasting away, not being used. So I, like, when I go out golf, I'm getting fresh air, I'm getting sunshine, I usually got a couple of friends with or whatever, we have a couple people, and, you know, you can bring some drinks on the course or whatever, and just relax, man, and just fucking listen to the birds chirp. And, you know, get your fresh air, get your sunshine. You know, most of the time I'm, I'm in a cave, right? Like, you know what I mean? I'm in a man cave most of the time. But, yeah, I did, I did, you know, and that was customer service too, except we were serving a lot of rich people, man. It was weird when I was uh, young, like, listening to the guy, these guys talk about business and all this bullshit. <clears throat> but uh, I worked there. I worked at a grocery store. It was Shop and Save when I worked there. And then they sold it to another guy, uh, Italian dude, who opened up his fair share. So one on Archer? This one's on Narragansett and 63rd. So 63rd and Narragansett right there on the southwest side. Yeah. And the other guy took it over. And there's still shop and saves, but it was like a, they sold off the name rights to like some Polish family or some shit like that. And so they're they're good too. But um, I worked there. I worked at um, friggin' 
Phelan Chevy for a while. I worked at this auto body shop here in uh, Berwyn before that. I worked at fucking Sears in their lawn and garden. I worked at Menards. I worked at Office Depot. And it's just like, that really helped me, like, to sharpen my social skills and my interaction with people. Because, like, when you're in school, they just teach <clears throat> us the book shit. You know what I mean? And you got to learn, like, how to manage situations. And then, like, the after-action review where I'd reflect on that, I learned and grow so much by that. Um, you know? Brian, you have a lot of self reflection I noticed. You're, like, a lot, very self-aware. I try to be, man, because, like... I've been super successful at managing my own energy and managing other people's energy too. And, uh, very introspective. Yeah. And I wish I actually had more time to reflect. Like one thing I want to do is calendar more because a lot of my shit, I'm just getting through each day and I don't have it. Like there's a, there's a lady said in this real estate <clears> search <throat> I was in recently is like, it's not real unless it's on the calendar. And the more, you know, I think about that, the more I believe it to be true because you just got to get it in fucking writing and it's there. And then, you know, fuck everything else be damned. Like this is what grown adults do who want to achieve things is they have a schedule in place, you know? And like, I'm very like spontaneous person. So I, it's not natural to me to just be like, okay, at nine o'clock I'm here at 11 o'clock I'm here at fucking, you know, noon I'm doing this. It's like, that doesn't account for all the fucking bullshit that doesn't miss me. I usually want it to like just go somewhere over that way, but it just comes right at me. You know what I mean? I know that feeling. <laughs> I start the day at a deficit every day, bro. I come in, I got text messages and shit. People were calling me. I got motherfuckers calling me at like seven thirty in the morning. It's like, man, I'm glad you're an early bird, but like, what do you think I'm doing right now, dude? I'm in the fucking shower washing my dirty ass. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just cleaning up, dude. I just got through walking a dog or whatever. I got to go over to the office. And there's a lot of self sacrifice that goes into, you know, being an adult, right? Like. I prefer to work out in the mornings, but it's going to take me a good half hour to hour if I'm going to do it the way I want. Um, you know, there's other, you know, whatever. There's other things besides that or just a shower every morning. So sometimes what I find myself doing is most of the time lately is I'll just leave the house after I'm done dog, walking the dog like around eight or a little after and I just head straight to the office. So I'm depriving myself right there on the front end of the day doing shit that I know I should be. You know, I'll stop and get a coffee or whatever, get coffee for the staff get fucking my my the new attorney with me mad who'll come over and get coffee and that's a nice way to start the day but you know you're i'm sacrificing then so then i have to figure out somewhere else in my day i'm lucky i got a shower at my office it's fucking dope dude because like one of my other attorney friends said um you know you made it when you got an off a uh, shower in your office i'm like it just happened to be there when i got this place but it is nice because, like, if I need the friggin' after work or whatever the fuck, you know, like, I can shower, I can clean up, even in the early in the day, <clears throat> and I can do it there and just be on my way. It's like the fucking bat cave, right? Yeah, like you come out ready and shit, you're ready to go. But, um, you know, you have to fit shit in elsewhere in the day. So, you know, I should be fucking working out. Sometimes I sacrifice it all together. If at a certain point you get home, you're like 7 or 8 o'clock, you're exhausted, and, you know, this is what we do. This is a sacrifice we make as adults, I guess, and to do our jobs well. Yeah, it's stressful to think about even trying to get everything you have to get in in a day sometimes. You know, it's just like, fuck, man, I got to do all this. I got to do that. I got to make time for a workout. I got to shower. I got to fucking cook because, you know, I'm eating out too much. It's just so much goes into being a, a grown man these days, and it's just like, ah, take me back. Well, back yeah. in the day, right? Take me back like throwback Thursday. Breaks <laughs> <laughs> with this song. Yeah. Throwback Thursday. Oh, man. Nobody when you didn't nice, have bro. shit to do. Throwback Thursday. Couple fine girls coming through. It's throwback Thursday. <laughs> yeah, man. What you gonna do? Sometimes on Sundays. Motherfucking podcast crew. <laughs> You got me in rare form, gentlemen. I've been taking my fucking vitamins, man. I'm feeling good. That's good. What kind about, of vitamins are you taking? I take this shit called quercetin. Um, it's uh, sounds like some Rogan shit right there. Queer I heard about it on Rogan, and I just gave it a shot. But I quercetin. It's Q U E R C I T I N. Quercetin. It's phonetic, right there. Yeah, phonetic quercetin. Get it? Um, you get it on Amazon. I use uh, E squared Nutrition or whatever the fucking brand is. And what I do is like some vitamins or, you know, supplements absorb better with proteins or fats. So I'll get some high fat yogurt. Sometimes I like this. They got a key lime one at Aldi's that I'll get um, tasty as fuck. It's like I don't always like Greek yogurt. It's just thick. You're, like, you're just trying to force this shit down or whatever. 
just to get the shit in you. But um, I like the ones they have at all. These are real good. Sometimes I'll get the... I got this new brand. I can't remember even what it's called off the time I had. I got, got it at Jewel the other day because fucking all these started closing at 8 p.m. in my neighborhood. Fuck! Used to be 9, dog. Thought I could have dinner with my mom and then run over and get my fucking apple pies <laughs> and my yogurt for the fucking next day or whatever. And I can't even do that shit anymore. But uh, anyway, so I'll mix, I'll mix it in with my yogurt. So I, have, I take quercetin. It's a natural anti-inflammatory. Um, it's, it's also what they call an ionophore. So during COVID, they were saying, you know, take zinc, take zinc, right? Zinc is good. And that's true, but if you take zinc on your own or on its own, you're more likely to piss a lot of it out. So what zinc is an ion and you need what they call an ionophore to get it past like the cellular barrier to like really get it absorbed into the cells. So quercetin does that. It also upregulates your energy levels. There's a shit in your body called ATP without which you'd be dead. And um, that's what's caused me to slim down like I'm less bloated. And, I, and I've been eating like a fucking fat savage. That's to do um, with energy, ATP. Yeah, ATP. Gives you energy. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, what gives cells energy. It causes them. Yeah, it gives you, them to do you what energy. Do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's what gives your body energy. It's something that's like you can't really see. We don't have a gas tank where we can look at it and see a visual of how much energy we have. But, yes, that's the energy the body has. So I take quercetin. I take this shit called spirulina. It's like a green. I got it in a powder form because I wanted to mix it with the yogurt anyway. So, like, if I if the quercetin comes in a capsule, you just got to take the two pieces apart and it's just powder on the inside. You just dump it in there. You know, stir it up real good. Put the next shit in and stir that up real good. There's this other stuff. It's called, I can't remember, terrible with names, uh, something with an A, like Aspiragula or something like that. And then I'm, I just started taking what they call BPC-157. Um, apparently, that helps with mus- muscle repair and tissue growth, and it just helps. It, that doesn't your, sound very natural. It's it's well, it stands for body protecting compound BPC one five one five seven. So there's like a very similar form of it that occurs naturally in your gut, but it occurs less and less over time as you get older. So this is just a synthetic version, but it basically helps you to heal. Is basically what they say. So I'm like, I'll give that a try. It's like a hundred bucks a bottle on Eat Amazon. Liver. It's expensive shit. Probably not a bad idea liver or elk meat or sucks. something that's really fucking dense you know bison or i cook horse. up some good liver though like as 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 liver goes you know i don't like liver but i cook it it's edible i don't yeah. like liver bro it's a I weird texture and taste fan. yeah it's I'm a weird not a fan t- of liver at all. never had it <clears throat> you never had it never had liver it's very soft it's it's like a really soft fucking meat but it's got a it's, it's a got very, like a it's a sharp taste, taste. Like, yeah yeah I'll, I'll, blunt i'll have liver worst um, but like just straight liver, nah, can't do it. Yeah, you got to do it right, you know. Even when it's done right, it's supposed to be really, really good for you. Very nutrient dense, and um, that's good. That's the, dad, like, the best thing you could eat for your immune system, probably. Um, liver. Well, yeah, because yeah, they'll take like a calf that's, liver, and like that's like what it does for us is it filters out poison, and it's got a lot of times it's pretty nutrient rich, apparently. So hmm. my dad used to make it all the time when we were kids, and. uh I just told him after a while, I'm like, I don't want it anymore. It was like one of those things where, like, you haven't ate it the first few times. Like, yeah, it's all right. But, like, then you feel like you're choking it down after a while. It's The flavor is not super appealing, yeah. but it's worth it's, a try. It's got a weird flavor to it. You ever have, like, a chicken thigh and it's got, like, the little organs in there? No. No? A chicken thigh with the you organs? You mean, like, the, the yeah, veins? Yeah, like, it's like... It's like, like veins and tendons and shit? Or no, 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 no. It's got it's little got kidney. The, it's like a kidney in there. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh. Yeah, it's in the thigh. Like, when you get a thigh piece, sometimes they're in there. It just sucks yeah, it tastes it. kind. Of, that's got that taste. It's like a little taste. like if you get a whole chicken, like that little bag that's usually on the inside with the yeah, that with all too, the, the gizzards. gizzards and shit, like a turkey at Thanksgiving. Exactly. Yeah, that tastes. Don't like forget that to too. remove your gizzard bags, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, people forget that, man. I make gravy with mine. You know, it's probably all right to leave it in there. I think that little wax paper or whatever they put can tolerate, you know, 500 degrees in an oven or whatever the fuck. <laughs> just don't do <laughs> it if you're deep frying. I don't think you want to deep fry that little fucking bag in with your turkey or whatever. <laughs> but uh. <clears throat> But yeah, no, um, yeah, it's it's supposed to be pretty good. I you could probably get it breaded or something, be real bomb, like a fucking country fried steak or something. Oh, that sounds good. Get that liver with a like, yeah, like. But again, you gotta season it right, man. I guess like every every liver I had, all I can taste is just iron and grains. It's like, irony, very irony, irony, irony grain. It's really rich in iron. Yeah, yeah. It's for people that have a deficiency. It's a great food to eat. Uh, yeah. Granted, yes, but I don't know, man. I just can't stand it. Like. I get you, man. You know what? You. One of these days, I'm going to make some liver for y'all. And trust me, you're going to be like, all right, this is edible. It's not great, right? It's not carnitas. No, of course. It's not It's not pastor. But, but in all fairness, I also don't eat tripe either. So it's just... Yeah, I don't eat tripe. I don't fuck the, with that. The, like, most I'll go tripe? outside of meat. Uh, chitlins, yeah, uh, yeah. The intestines. The, yeah. the intestine lining. 
Yeah. Oof. I didn't know that was. Oh, no, it's not an intestine. Line. It's intestine. Intestine. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Intestine. Menudo is the stomach, the stomach lining. Yeah, you know, that's with all that little. No, nope. you know. No, nope. I wish I my I dude. wish my Mexican friends would explain that I'm shit to me before they had me eat it. <laughs> Try gross, man. I can't. I, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll eat I'll, brain. People love tri- sesos. That's yeah. good too. I don't mind. Jeez, I don't, don't want to taste animals. Brain. You guys brains. can have that part, I'll bro. That's, for real, brains. I swear to God, it sounds crazy, but brains are good, dude. You're in a room full of dollars. A little bit of lime, a little bit of green hot sauce, some a little bit of salt, cilantro. Ah. You start Whoa. eating grass because you're thinking like a cow now. You ate their fucking brain. <laughs> Some fava beans in there? No. Fava beans. <laughs> yeah. A little Hannibal Lecter. I'm oh. going to take a quick bathroom break, boys. I just down that fucking yeah, go ahead. 20 ounce uh, water with electrolytes in there, and I'm sipping on this, sipping, sipping on this non alcoholic athletic brewing company. Yeah. Good name for something that probably still makes you fat, even though it's alcohol-free. Free Wave Hazy IPA. Mm, We're delicious. not getting paid for that, everybody. I'm not. I don't know how. <laughs> Pay us, bitch. <laughs> do, you, do you enjoy non-alcoholic beer? I do, because um, the ones that are done well, like Heineken Zero, is fucking delicious. That one there is pretty good. If you guys want to taste whatever, you can grab that one. I got on another one or two in there. The thing is, like, think about it. You don't always feel like soda or milk or water or whatever the fuck. So, like, when I'm not drinking, I do extended sober October. I go from October all the way up to St. Patrick's Day. That's when I'm fucking fight, and Irish will be back down at the parade drinking yeah. again. <laughs> and um, it's refreshing. You know, it's like you want something with a steak or, you know, whatever. I'm having the fights over at my office next mm-hmm. week if you guys want to come through for that. And I'll have plenty of food and all that, and I'll have some non-alcoholic beers. And I still smoke my Mary Jane or whatever, so it's all fucking good. It's not like I'm completely deprived of life's pleasures. But I just don't have a fucking hangover. But that know? doesn't make you sober, Brian. Well, it doesn't make me Fuck fucked you. up either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back, gentlemen. I gotta piss. We'll be right Great back. Great conversation so far, by the way. This I'm break. loving this. You know, uh-huh. I feel I feel really fucking at home here, gentlemen. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna go piss in the corner right now. <laughs> Right. Yeah, right by uh, right by the entrance. Like you're leaving almost. Yeah, yeah, it's on the right door, the door on the right, the first door on the right. We're yeah, describing, yeah. we're doxing George's house right now. It's all right. <laughs> we'll give you guys a bl- uh, blueprint later. <laughs> yeah, liver. It's not bad, dude. I, hey, you make it with a little bit of onions, some serranos, you know, like and rajas, the little strips. Yeah. Fucking cut that up. Salt, pepper, garlic. I'll try it. I'm interested. It's Oof, fucking fire, it. bro. And if you do cook it for us, just have something else on hand because I might not eat the whole thing. Dude, it don't is. Don't be offended, please. I don't like liver. How much I do, do you have like to liver? eat for it to really make a difference, though? Like a whole liver? I would oh, so. no. At least a regular, oh. I, I, regular. I make them in tacos. I make tacos. Liver tacos. No, but I mean, like, for it to do what it's supposed to do within your body. That's what oh, I'm saying. I mean, probably on a regular basis. Oh, like regular. Three times. Yeah. Like, not no, every day, but hey, maybe like. That's the thing. So, like. Your body knows, man. Sometimes I'm craving it, and I don't even know. And it's pr- probably the iron. Like, you you crave certain things. It's because your body your body needs it. You know, what I was uh, listening to the other day. Some guy was talking about how, you know, when you get sick and you're not hungry. Yeah. <clears throat> he was saying he's like that's the wisdom of the body talking to you. He's like, what happens is your body wants to focus on getting better, not on digesting food. So you're not hungry for a reason. And us Mexicans, you know, oh, you need your energy, you know, like you need some milk, right? He needs and, some milk. Yeah. And the truth is, it's probably best to not eat anything. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome you know back. what I'm talking about, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. Let me get these headphones on so I feel like I'm back in the zone. Oh, you're in the zone. <clears throat> yeah, but I can't hear as well. It's not auto zone, though. No. Without the headphones on, um, yeah, no, I mean, it's if you can be disciplined, you know. Um, what I found was that like I'm kind of losing weight being on that shit that I'm on without having to sacrifice too much on the eating. Yesterday, we went out and we had a. I told my guy, I'm like, you want to go get a fat ass breakfast, um, tomorrow, and he's like, yeah. So I hit him up Friday night, said that shit. Him, my wife, and her friend, we all went to Three Sons over there on Archer Avenue. I had. Three pigs in a blanket with a side order of sausage and fucking eggs. That's all I had all day. So by the end of the night last night, I'm in the recording studio. Um, we're working on some rap music, and um, we're in the fucking studio. And the guy's wife comes down, and I'm telling him, I'm like, dude, I can't concentrate anymore. Let's take a break. We got some good shit accomplished on the speed or whatever. I'm like, 
my brain's not working right. I'm fucking hungry as shit. I haven't eaten since these fucking pancakes in the morning or whatever. And so she brings down some pork and rice and it was delicious or whatever, but it was small. It was more like a snack. So my wife, she was working um, at the bar last night. She manages this, this bar, the Works Bar and Grill in Summit. And so we go over there afterwards. She's hanging out. <clears throat> and I was like, do you want something to eat? Unfortunately, you know, you used to have a lot of places like 24 hours in Summit. They don't have any more. So I went to Tony's over there in Ogden. It's a little family restaurant. Like you go east down, or excuse me, west down Ogden. In Brookfield. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Dude, Big portions. I'm, I'm in love with that place, bro. Big portions. I've never man. been there. They impressed the fucking shit out of me last really? night. Yeah, it was, Um, you know, my guy and I were looking at the menu. I brought my wife a BLT or whatever. And I'm like, man, I'm going with a burger. So I got their Texas burger. They had some fucking sweet barbecue sauce on there, that melted cheddar, the fucking bacon. Um, they put they, they put maybe a little too many grilled onions, but who can com complain about that? It it was that good, dude. Because I they gave me they so dude I couldn't believe it when the order was ready. They gave me a box. It looked like one of those boxes you get at the grocery store. And I was like, is this all our shit? So, um, they gave us minestrone soup with fucking fresh baked like bread rolls, dude, and butter in there. I sat there at the bar, you know, there's still customers in there, these fucking degenerates, everybody's trying to get their last drink, when the clock strikes two, it goes back to 1 a.m. on the yeah. time change, so everybody's like, ah, we're gonna drink till three tonight, keep this fucker open, like these motherfuckers don't have lives or whatever, right, they want to go home, <laughs> and so we sat there, ate our food, the fucking burger was delicious, had a minestrone soup, uh, and I had those rolls, I still got them, dude, I love it when the restaurant's like the gift that keeps on giving, where fucking, you got some for the next day. I got two minestrone soups because my wife didn't have one. The other guy didn't have one. So now I got an extra fucking minute. I got two minestrones and some bread rolls. I'm going to be sitting around like fucking a king dude later with my fucking shirt off, you know, spilling shit on myself, eating fucking minestrone soup. So you, pay a very, you, you paint a very... Uh... Yeah, he's so passionate about yeah. it. Yeah. It's like, it's like a halftime speech. It's <laughs> like you're like down. If you want to get what you want in life, you got to do what you want. You know what I mean, gentlemen? Fucking yeah. get after it. Yeah, especially <laughs> the ending, just with your shirt <laughs> off and spilling shit all over you. Just, oh, I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm yeah, actually waking up minestrone soup right off your hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw fucking Hans. Fucking put bed and bread on it. Stop it all exactly. up. My mouth's watering, bro. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I'm, I'm actually a very neat, very neat person. In fact, I'm like. Cleaning is is something that makes me feel good, and they, you know, I think there's even studies that show if you keep a clean house, you're less like you don't feel as mentally dragged down. Yep. And yeah, you don't feel like uh, crazy because your fucking place is crazy too, right? It's like you never think about these things when you're a kid. Like your dad's like, put that fucking hammer back in the st on that spot right on the shelf in the garage, right? Because then when you fucking need it, you know where it's at, right? Yeah. And I switch around. Ah, did I put it in the trunk of the car? Like, what the fuck did I do with it? You know, you know what yeah. surprisingly really does change your mindset is actually, like, doing your bed in the morning for the rest of the yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. I never realized, like... Jordan Peterson would talk about that. Yeah. Jordan Peterson. <laughs> I've heard that from before, Jordan Peterson. What but, you um, have to do is... Gotta make, gotta, make your bed in the morning. Yeah, let's all mock the guy now. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I support guy. this guy. Yeah. I love the guy. I'm making fun of his voice, but I love the guy. No, he's cool. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah. And dude, making the bed is really good because fucking, you know, sometimes like I'll come back like if I don't do it, sometimes it doesn't get done or whatever. And I'm like, I just see the sheets all bunched up. I'm like, it just looks like chaos. Like, did a fucking right. windstorm come through here and just fucking blow shit around? And when I get back in there, I want it to be neat and tidy and comfortable. You know what I mean? Like a soldier. Like, I go to sleep now, and then I get in there. Oh, it's fucking great. It's all organized. I what the guy Serial killers are neat and tidy. That Dahmer. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, I do know about uh, criminal law as an attorney or whatever. No. <laughs> I, have you ever, like, come across serial killers in your profession? I have Somebody, not. Some, some fucked up shit. Like, something that you heard that was like, oh, fuck. The motherfucker poured acid on his girl or some shit. No, I have not. I mean, if you well, want to... anticlimactic? No, I mean, the most dramatic fucking thing I've seen as an attorney is divorce trials. Like, those shit. That's, oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like a fucking telenovela, man. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. You know, there's a lot of tra drama. You'd be, like, in real estate law, people argue over petty bullshit. Oh, you know, the guy didn't fix the door. I want another 250, 500,000, 2,000. Get the fuck out of here, right? It's not worth that much. Like, what happened to these people, man? They used to fucking learn how to fix shit themselves. You know, it's like, you got a how-to on YouTube. You can watch that shit anytime you want. 
and these people bitch and complain, right? So I see that in real estate enough already. You think that's bad? You multiply it by like 10 for divorce law. They fight over every fucking thing. I've got friends going through divorce and they hear all the horror stories. It's fucking terrible. It's one of the worst parts about the human condition and human uh, society. But if you wanted to hear some crazy shit, probably just listen on some court calls. You know, I, you might be able to watch them on Zoom. I, ha I haven't really been doing court work since they've been on the Zoom thing with COVID and all this. But uh, they're still on it for the most part, so you could probably just watch it. Or if you wanted to go down there in person, I, I did watch a really interesting trial. When I was, I, I had the pleasure, dude. This guy was a fucking gentleman. Like he's the kind of guy to sit down here with us, you know, type of thing. Just a real good gentleman. He was a federal judge, um, the late great John W. Dare, a real fucking gentleman. You know, one of the nicest, classiest guys you'd ever meet. You know, well dressed, old school, firm and fair, and. I was working for him, and there was a big trial going on in one of the nearby courtrooms. So he says, go watch that shit. Check that out. So there was this former police officer who used to work in, like, I think Willow Springs or somewhere around here. And uh, his name is, like, Stephen Mandel. And this guy, after getting kicked out of the police force, was, like, an enforcer for the mob. And um, these are all great stories. I love these stories. Dude, this guy, and he was... I, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this guy in the fucking courtroom, you know, he didn't, like, I, I looked at him a couple of times, I made eye contact with him, he didn't, I think he was trying to, like, take his energy volume level down so they didn't, like, make you think that he was guilty, so he just looked at you like a normal person, but the fucking videos they were showing of this guy and his partner, he had another guy who was in on it, they had a torture chamber where they're going to try to take this guy from Brookfield, this rich real estate mogul over here, and he was going to try to extort him, so they had... You know, they knew how to do this shit. They know how to cover evidence since they were former police officers. The guy's got, it, like, the typical thing you'd see on a fucking Who Done It 2020 Dateline or something on, on TV. And he's got a list. He's got the fucking duct tape, the zip ties. They got saws and shit, chairs that they're going to fucking tie these people down to. They got a sink there so they can wash off blood and, you know, or a little shower stall thing. There's some little warehouse bullshit area they had. So they fucking caught this guy before he, like, when he was on his way to go do it because... They were talking about um, they were talking about various things that the mob was involved in because this guy was connected to him, and uh, so they they catch him before he does it. They bust him. Now he's in court with the other guy, and uh, they were talking about and I don't want to say like specifics, but the ownership of Polecat Strip Club came up in the fucking thing because they were talking about it's like half owned by this group and half owned by this group. And I'll explain that maybe a little more when we get off the air. Um, because Is I ain't no rat bitch. You know, there, <laughs> right? no, I'm kidding. It's public. It's public. It's public record. It's, you know, it was in the court thing, but I don't need to reiterate that and have it coming up in an algorithm search result when these fuckers find me. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but um, they talk about the ownership of that. And it was really cool because they talked about the money that was involved, like how profitable it is and all this shit, which I'll tell you guys once this is yeah. over. But uh, very interesting, man. Very interesting shit. And those were like some of the fucking weird cycles that are out there. And that's how $10 Tuesdays at Polecats came to be. There you go. Their wings are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they, uh, they, their advertising is, is incredible. Do you be driving yeah. down like 294? Yeah, you see. And you'll see the fucking funny. sign. Is that the one you're talking about? No, I've seen them. They're funny. They're funny. There's one right now, and it says, Ten dollar Tuesdays. Polecats is fighting inflation. They show like a boxing glove hitting inflation. I was like, "This is fucking classic, son." You know what I mean? It doesn't get any better than that. So it's like, you know what I mean? Just but inflation's in play on Saturdays and Fridays. That's dude, for sure. I mean, if you think it's hard out there for a pimp, do you think it's hard for some of these fucking girls out there? You know, slinging that body around the pole and shit. No. Fucking with inflation right now. <laughs> no. They they gotta keep that business coming in. Regardless of the inflation, and that's the funny thing because they make good money. Certain though. industries don't really suffer, no matter whether there's a fucking pandemic or a fucking epidemic or a recession or whatever. You, you got these gambling fucks on these machines in the gas station at like 10 a.m. going home, embarrassed their fucking family, and then the, the strip people going to the strip club. It doesn't seem like that slowed down. They were wearing masks in the strip club during during COVID. If you want a lap dance, you can get this shit with a mask too. <laughs> Don't get none of that dirty Indiana is. spit in your fucking face or whatever. You know what I mean? Because they got the fucking thing on. That's I'm kidding, cool. man. It's almost, it's almost like a consumer staple. <laughs> I'm kidding. Much love to, the, to all the, the, the ladies, the dancers ladies. out there working hard. And uh, no disrespect to Indiana either because 
so many people are leaving here going there because it's you know, it's, it's starting to become a better state than what we are in fucking yeah we're looking like the suckers <laughs> you know, sticking around here man no yeah, but you know what there's something deep rooted here man you just love this city maybe the suburbs not so much the city i love the city i love everything about chicago i just hate how expensive. at least not downtown downtown is just pretty <clears throat> property tax prices going up and up man. Yeah. it's crazy yeah what can you tell us about that about the property tax yeah. yeah what the fuck is going on there's a hey there's a, some sort of amendment on the uh ballot this this year something's going on with the property taxes yeah that one i'm not super familiar with because i know some of the stuff they have referendums and addendums there's like the workers rights one right there's uh there's something else on there and that one's been kind of taking uh front and center but i mean um, the bottom line for Illinois is that it has a really, really bad debt problem. Probably the worst in the nation. It's because it's corrupt. I actually, yeah, yes, it, it absolutely is because of that. Um, it's it's one party control. It's corruption within that party. There's a political machine. You can't get rid of politicians that um, you know that are not good. And the the politicians in Illinois basically pick the voters instead of it being the other way around because of the way they draw the election maps. Hey, I got a question. So, Sorry, I'm going to yeah. interrupt you real quick. Property taxes. Yeah. You know how, like, if you're late on your property tax pay, uh, payment, somebody could buy them? Yeah. Is that normal? Is that, like, everywhere? Or is that just here? Because it seems no. like a fucking mafia. Uh, um, it's like, it's like I, the, my guess the, the be... county is in cahoots with whoever buy, uh, whoever's yeah. able to p- buy these. And then they sell them for more, and it's just... Well, here's my understanding of how the, the property tax purchase system in, in Illinois works. I'm guessing it's similar to other states because governments still have the same needs as each other and they need money, right? So right. why do why are they selling the taxes? Well, very simply, even when you're not paying the property the- taxes, they still need the money, though. So they still need... Even if, 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 you know, if me, Hans, you guys, you're not paying your property taxes, they still need the money. So what happens is these investors come in, They'll give them the money, but then they have to pay the taxes on that property for the next three to four years. It's a waiting period until they can become the owner of the home on a tax sale. So after that waiting period is, is come, uh, then they can go and petition the court for a tax <coughs> deed, and they can become the owner of the property. Yeah. Now, that's why when you get mortgages, banks require the property taxes to be paid as part of your mortgage payment. So they take the total bill, they divide it by 12, which is the number of months in the year, you know, if your taxes are 150 bucks a month, 250, 350, right. whatever. Put them in escrow. Yes. So escrow is just a fancy name for savings account where the banks are forcing you to have your money for your taxes and your insurance for the following year. And why is that? If the taxes aren't paid and somebody else becomes the owner, there's no more security on the home, so the loan's no good to the bank. And then also, if the home burns down and there's no insurance on it, you know that's a problem as well. For the same exact reason, there's no more security on the loan, so they force you to have these things in place in an escrow account. Um, but yeah, so as far as that goes, the county, you're, you're good for about a year until the next year when the tax sale hits, if you haven't paid the taxes, they usually, you know, before COVID it was in May, they would do the tax sale. The interest would accrue at a rate of 1% per month until the tax sale. And then when the tax sale uh, purchaser buys it, their interest rate goes way up. They're probably like in a 30% range. So you can either pay them off when you're going to sell the home later. You know, you got three or four years to do it before they, you know, become <coughs> the owners, the tax buyer becomes the owner. But yeah, some people invest in it. That's more for bigger people. I get a lot of like small investors. They want to like invest in taxes. I'm like, first of all, do you know that you got to pay like the next few years until, um, you know, this is up? And uh, they don't realize it. They're like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, it's not just the one year. Like you got to keep on paying the taxes. So you got to be able to make sure you can afford it. And then if they pay you back, you get your little interest or whatever. So your money's tied up in there for three, four years. And then maybe you become the owner of the home. And what good is that, you know, with certain homes? The fucking place might be destroyed three, four years later by the time you get it. These people aren't paying their taxes. Maybe, you know, a foreclosure starts too or some fucking thing. Thing gets looted of all its copper, its heat, you know, HVAC system, whatever. The foreclosure process starts, yeah, they're definitely not going to give a shit about that problem. Well, let me ask you, how many tax payments do you have to miss before it goes into, uh, like, a sale? Yeah, so if you miss the year, yeah, if you miss the year, the whole so there's, year? there's two payments a year. There's um, Cook County's really late on their second um, bill this year, but um, usually it's the one comes out uh, February, it's due March, you got to pay it by March, and then the other one is usually the bill come out in the summer, like June. I heard they were going to waive this August. second one. Yeah, right, man. Yeah. Never, bro. Ever, Car- ever. Uh, Carlos Cosignon? 
I don't know. They're waiting until after People the election, that, bro. Like, They're waiting until after the election, wait, bro. Exactly, because it's there's something in the ballot about it. Yeah, well, they're here's the thing. So it's a dirty, dirty game, dude. Man. It's Fuck so yeah. dirty. So. So I like to announce this a lot because I want to let people like us, these young professionals, young, young people in Illinois know what we're up against. <clears throat> so the total state debt is uh, um, for obligations that we have promised to state workers that we don't have is about $150 billion of unfunded pension payments into the pension plans and another $50 billion of health insurance promises that we made to cover Blue Cross, Blue Shield, for these state workers that we also don't have. And the reason for that is for 30, 40 years or more, um, the Illinois Congress has been taking the money that is supposed to go into the funding, like the minimum funding that's supposed to go into pension plans, and they've been using it for other projects. And so they've made these promises that they cannot keep. The courts have put a blessing on it, unfortunately, that this is that this is legal. Like it says, well, it says you have to you can't diminish their pension rights, but it doesn't say you actually have to fund the pension fund. I'm like, I don't know what kind of good judge could literally put their stamp on that because it's like, that's a false promise. That's what they call a fallacy, right? Mm -hmm. So so we have all this debt and the state does all these things to try to keep people here or to get them to move here in order to you know get their tax dollars for however long they live in Illinois. So they have these down payment assistance programs that new home buyers can take advantage of. And I see these frequently in my practice. And what it is is they issue state debt. So they don't even have the money that they're giving you to like get you here for your down payment assistance. They issue debt bonds and sell those in order to raise the money. And then they have to pay this shit back later. But they figure, ah, we got them now. They're living here and we'll collect their tax dollars for, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years or however long they live in Illinois. Some of those down payment assistance programs are forgivable. Some are repayable in small amounts or some of them are repayable at the end of the loan. But in terms of why property taxes are higher in certain areas than others, like Berwyn, reasonably high taxes. Cicero, reasonably high as well. Uh, Oak Park, Illinois, high taxes. Any of these little south suburbs, uh, these little, like, unfortunately corrupt and run down suburbs on the south side have these extremely high tax rates, 37%, 40%. Mm -hmm. It's insane. And I I think my, my theory as to why that is, city of Chicago taxes are actually cheaper than, than the suburbs. When you have more heads or more per capita people to tax, you don't have to tax as highly as some of these places do to get the money they need. Now, another thing that a lot of people don't know, and this is like the reason I'm just spilling this all out to you is because it's one of my areas of that I've become like expertise in due to um, what I've done is the property tax system is rigged in that the government always gets the amount of money it needs regardless of the value of your home. So I'm going to repeat that one more time. The government always gets the amount of money they need, regardless of the value of your home. So how this whole property tax system works is the assessor is, is required to determine how much value there is in a certain area. So they would take this area where your house is here, and they'd look at all the other homes and say, okay, we have like, you know, this many, we have a billion point whatever in this square area. What value would we, or what rate, what tax rate, what percentage would we have to tax at in order to meet the budgetary needs of the government? So local school districts will say, we need 100 uh, million, we need 120 million, whatever. The police department says, we need uh, you know, 80 million, 100 million. And regardless of whether your home values are up or down, they just, for example, just if, you're, okay. if your home values are up, they'll keep the lower rate, the, the local tax rate steady, or they'll decrease it. If your home values are down, they just increase the local tax rate. So they're always getting the amount of money they need and then so no matter what and that eliminates accountability out of the system because if they when when home values are lower if if they weren't charging you as much at that time which would be fair because you know you don't your your property's not as valuable blah 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 um you know if they were charging you less during those times that would be different but they're always charge they don't have to cut fat they don't have to you know make better contracts they don't have to watch how much they're paying people they just get a budget and they basically just make it in, in Illinois, there's not really talk of like fiscal responsibility or cutting. You never hear that shit. And we had That's so corrupt. We had you remember that Governor Rauner? Yeah, yeah. Had him a few years back. Bruce Rauner. <clears throat> Bruce Rauner. Mm -hmm. So the Democrats were like shitting all over him for a few years because we didn't have a budget. So we didn't have a state budget. That means that like the bills that we had that are just your everyday bills for like services provided or goods provided to the Illinois government weren't getting paid. And the reason that Rauner said he was doing that, which I believe, 
is that the budget that the Congress was passing at that time was like $7 billion over what we took in in revenue. And he's like, this is why I'm elected is to make sure you're not spending $7 billion more than we're even taking in as a state every year. So he refused to sign a budget for a couple of years. So a guy took a stand, which is the only thing he could do as a governor. Um, and you know, it did have some negative consequences. We pay higher taxes because of, you know, higher interest rates. If we got to, if it costs us more to borrow money as a state, um, you know, it has to be made up for somewhere. Usually it's the taxpayers that cover that. But um, in any event, you know, they don't talk really about a balanced budget. They like, you know, it's like at some point, I know a government's not a household, but why, like, we have to manage our shit, you know, otherwise we go under, but they just continue to do this. It's an, it's an interesting thing, man. We're stuck here with this shit, you know, in our state and where we live, you know? But I love this city, man. <laughs> and I don't blame you, George. Let me real quick, oh, the fucking shit, wire got caught. No worries. Um, you know, I love the city too. I love the city too, but it's, it's a change city to me, man. Like, um. Things, things are different. You know, I always used to have a super proud of Chicago. It was very idealized, you know, like it's a great city. It's one of the world's greatest cities, which it is. But, you know, it's 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 different, man. Um, you know, and what I mean by that is like the taxes are really bad. Oh, the man. fiscal management is really bad. I mean, it has been. People are moving up. But the, the crime problem, man, you know, like. Oh, forget about it. Dude, just this last week, just this last week. There was a shoot, like somebody shot a, a gun in front of the building. Just one shot. But my staff's working. I, I happen to be downstairs at the time this happened. And uh, in, the in the front on Damn. Central Avenue. And so. Your mic. Oh, shit. Yeah, so it was on Central Avenue. This was right in the middle of the day, 12, 12 20 in the day. Um, we kind of pieced all the shit together to, you know, the. So this guy, he gets into a work altercation. And he doesn't like the person he got into the altercation with. And so he gets off. He, I don't know if he got dismissed for the day or whatever. And he fucking takes a gun. And he rides by on like a 10-speed bicycle and fucking blasts into the car. On a bike. On a bike. He was moving quick. Because I saw him on the security cameras. I had the security cameras aimed at the other side of the street. Wow. Not to be morbid about this, but that's, that's actually pretty gangster if you're just on a bike. Just... It's a ride by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool bike. The dude on the fucking 10-speed hey. got gotcha, you. Know? You got to watch out for everybody right now. Even the Jimmy John's delivery fucking guy over here, freaky fast. So fucking everybody's put a cap in your ass. Everybody's strapped. I was just you telling you Hans have to be, you know yeah. what? One thing I will not get is sucker punched. You ever see those videos where people get sucker punched? Yeah, it's fucked up. I, I look, I, I watch my back, man, if I'm out. Because I will not get sucker punched man that just looks stupid as fuck and it's fucked up you gotta be very situational you gotta shut down the podcast if that happens <laughs> we don't take it seriously anymore that's it yeah. like, i got sucker punched the other day podcast is over guys yeah no more Dude, no when more you get a black guy you just do what every other fucking per guy does and just tell me wife beat you or some shit like that you can't admit you got sucker punched yesterday i'm kidding yeah you're yeah. better off Ran to a doorknob. What was that, Paul Katz? <laughs> yeah, I got a high heel with a fucking orbital yeah. that I'm yeah. all messed up. I was too close to the stage when she was spinning on the pole. Yeah. I was complaining about the Illinois budget, and somebody got pissed off. <laughs> fucking kicked me in the face. So, yeah. So you well, yeah, saying... shot fired in front of the fucking office, dude, and, and this was not the first time. So, so that, I, I could see the guy fucking rides off real quick, and, um, you know, so this is broad daylight. And in the past, I've only had that building, what was it? I moved in there like 2018, 2019. And, uh, you know, I rented first and eventually became the owner. Last year, October of 2021, um, there was car drove by and fired like five, six shots. No reports of injuries or property damage. Was, I don't know where they were shooting a gun up in the air or just wherever the fuck they shot it. Mm -hmm. But there was an immediate police response which doesn't always happen in chicago in fact the police response time is getting even longer and so we get immediate police presence over there they come down they ask around anybody injured you know whatever anybody hurt anybody killed the reason they had an immediate response there was because biden's wife was in town that day and the airport's right down the street so when her when her plane arrived they had a motorcade of Chicago police officers in addition to Secret Service and stuff to, you know, you know, escort the motorcade. But after they cleared that, they just left and nothing ever became of it after that, you know. And we believe yeah. we had the car on camera that did it was this blue Volkswagen Jetta, fucking tinted windows. And my my staff, you know, I could see them on the inside cameras run into the back and shit like that. 
when the shots were going off and uh it was fucked up man it's fucked up you know i grew over there and that was a rarity in the day yep. and there was one time before that we had we had had a barbecue that night at the, the office because i got a dual lot it's a building i want an open vacant lot on the other and uh after we were all wrapping up, there was a gangbanger who had gotten out of county jail or some shit, and he was staying at this apartment that was around the block from, from my house by, by maybe 75 feet. And just, they flashed up the whole fucking front of the thing. I couldn't, I, bang, 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 bang. And uh, when I drove by there, I could see, you know, glass busted out, fucking bullet holes and shit. And, uh, and that's right there in the neighborhood, dude. And we never had that before, brother. And I, I had realtors tell me, the, big, the one guy's like, he was driving up by Pulaski and fucking Belmont or somewhere up there or someplace. And just somebody just runs out in the intersection. They started firing shots at somebody who was like in a car or like somebody who was like crossing or somebody out in the street or something. I'm like, Jesus Christ, bro. On the open. Dude, I, I was driving one night. I was coming back from an event, this real estate event. And like, like a Mad Max, like outlaw group of fucking bandits come through on like four wheelers and motocross bikes and fucking like motorcycles and shit and there's like one squad car following them around just to try to like keep an eye on them and i'm like fuck you know what i mean like i don't want to talk about how i react to these situations on camera but i was fucking ready if some shit happened <laughs> and um you know you kind of got to be and like here's my mentality man you know the government the police they won't stop a shooting from happening to you but afterward the fucking media will tell you how to think and feel about it right mm-hmm the one thing I feel like in my life is like if the lives of ourselves and our family and our friends are not worth fighting to the death for, then what is, you know what I mean? What is worth fighting for? And I, that's one thing I respect about the Mexican community, man. They know how to take care of theirs, right? When all that shit was going down, fucking bats, fucking AR-15s, guns, like they're like, dude, if you want to come in here and destroy our shit, you know, we're ready for you, man. You're talking about those riots after the uh, George Floyd thing? <laughs> after yeah. the George Floyd murder, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that was a, that was a disgrace to the city of Chicago as well. And that's that's one thing I'm talking about where it's a different Chicago, right? Like, you get to see the fucking aftermath of this weak-ass, soft-ass fucking stance they had, right? Like, old man Daly, he was he was part of the machine, right? Probably, I mean, I don't, I don't want to necessarily have to call the guy corrupt or whatever. But when he was fucking mayor, they made a movie right now about the shit they used to do, right? There's one called The Seven. So when they had the Democrat National uh, Convention here in, like, the 60s, um, protesters were beaten down with billy clubs by the poli police in the street over just protesting. Look at the difference in eras of how old man Daly handled shit compared to now. Right. I'm not saying to abuse people in the street or right. beat people in the street, but if violence has to be qu like quelched right yeah law and order is the glue that holds you gotta be a wolf to get together. the wolves kind of a well yeah you, you right you can't you can't deal with you got to meet force with force right yeah and so literally lightfoot let them destroy the city the down the, the downtown area let them destroy the fucking city for all the people who have businesses down there for all the people that work down there window fronts smash the fuck out lawlessness down Michigan Avenue, you know, and it wasn't just her. Governor Prisker, too, could have declared a state of emergency and brought in some National Guard. Like, why is it acceptable for people to endanger others and destroy property and fucking steal shit? Like, why aren't we stopping that? You know what I mean? What, what's the point of having a police force? Uh, what's the point of having a National Guard if we don't use them in these times? And because Prisker could have declared a state of emergency and sent them in. And so, like, I'm feeling like we're at a, we're at a, we're at a crazy time where the criminals, they, the law and the policy we have gives criminals the advantage, dude. And I don't think the advantage should be with criminals. Why? Why are we the bad guys, right? Like, as regular citizens who should be able to defend themselves. Especially, there's just a U.S. Supreme Court decision came down on the Second Amendment saying that your right to defend yourself exists outside of the home as well. So the tough thing about Supreme Court decisions is they usually keep a very narrow decision. They don't want to, like, go all the way to say, like, you know, concealed carry um, requirements are bullshit. Like, we're striking those down, too. They didn't do that. But they said that, um, you know, you do have an a individual right to defend yourself outside of the home. And so the problem in Illinois with that is these motherfuckers deprive you of your rights with their fucking, for long periods of time, with their restrictions. 
So like most states don't have what they call like a, f I, I think most states don't quote me on this unless you're going to check on the computer. I think most states don't have a FOID requirement. Yeah. And so here in Illinois, they do. And I what that, to that because I have friends who live out of state and they, a lot of them don't, a lot of states don't have it. There's only actually a few that do. I think there's like, you know, four or five and we're one of them. If I, if I remember correctly. So like the FOID card, they do basically the same background check that the federal government has already done on you anyway, except they take like nine fucking months, dude. Like when I applied for my FOID card right around the time of COVID, there's a there's a gun shop over here in Lyons, Illinois. They'll help you fill out the application. They'll submit it. It's like the application's 10 and you give them 10 for helping you out, 20 bucks. Dude, I applied in like June or July. I didn't get my shit until like February of the next year, bro. It was fucking, it was nine months by the time I got my shit. My wife got hers first. Um, and, uh, and FOID or the firearm? FOID card? FOID card. Okay. Yeah, so you, like, so that's just your owner operator's ID. You can yeah, yeah, buy yeah. it, you can transport it in a car, but you're not supposed to have it loaded and on you. Unless you got a concealed carry. Yeah, unless you have a concealed carry. So then you got to do that too. So then there's this dual requirement to like take advantage of you know the rights that you have. So like criminals never file this shit, but you're of course expected to wait for a concealed carry, and um you know you could be that next person sitting there in a fucking jewel while somebody starts shooting in the next aisle or something. You're pinned down. Like what the fuck do you do? Try to get out of there if you can, but if you can't, or the you know, it puts you in a tough <clears throat> space, like mental space, consciously, because you got to think. If you hear those shots going off and somebody's getting it in the next aisle, like, if you could stop that, would you? And we're not even ready for that shit. Like, I think what we need in this country is like teaching people responsibility, man. You know, like with well, everything, especially I was telling him, like, it feels like there's a there's a lack of morality nowadays like there's no there's nothing to like yeah. when we were younger i mean you talk about it we went to a catholic high school we, I, don't, I believe you went to maybe a catholic grade school i did i went to st joe's grade school and some okay yeah we went to catholic like, high school and not everybody does it i'm not saying but there was a there's there was a foundation to where where you went to school what your foundation was at home there was a set of values that was instilled in you Right. And as you got older, they'll stayed with you. And, you know, you you were able to set your own foundational rules for your kids and so on and so forth. It feels like that's disappearing with a lot of today's. Right. Actions. You don't get to see them at home. Right. Who how people are raising right. people. But it does feel like that. It definitely does, man. And like, I'm, I don't think that morals have to be from the Catholic religion or any religion in particular. But I think we need just guiding values, like any of these, like wealth building guides and and, and things like that. The first thing they they say is you got to establish what values. Like, what is your why? What is your purpose of why you're doing this? Is it financial independence for yourself so that you can retire and you not have to work until you're fucking dead? Um, is it to pass down wealth to your family? What is it, right? And you have these values, independence, and all these different things. And we don't have that a lot. We really don't. And we're not getting it from the government. I don't think we're going to get it from the government. So my opinion is that like it really has to come from us. And but I say I say Catholic because of church and community and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. And people, there's not a lot of people doing that either, going to church yeah. or you know being yeah, part of that community to where like you see you're interacting with other people's kids and it's like this whole little community kind of raising and not all the time but yeah, you know keep yeah, yeah. It. To, in all fairness i think a lot of it is because people lost faith in the I got church just because uh just because of all the fucking keep this going i want to hit back on this topic when we get back oh uh, right. i think people a lot of people have lost faith because i mean the three of us were jaded right I, i'm sure even brian's even jaded about jaded everything, <laughs> everything regarding the church so just imagine that i feel like tenfold with uh with just the average layperson and we grew up. We grew up Catholic, so. Yeah, but I'm just, you know, with all this craziness going on, there's something there's that's no, just... There's no unity. Yeah, there's something that's not, like, like, tying it all together. Maybe it's church. Maybe, I don't <coughs> know, whatever it'll... I I'm just saying, from w the way we, the majority right. of us grew up, from the people that I know, you know, there, there's we had some type of cohesion, something that we all came together on, mm -hmm. right? Whether we, we Whether we adopted that or not, it's still kind of ingrained inside of you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so that's how I figure it. But yeah, it's uh really eye opening with what he's saying there, man. Like, um this is probably the one podcast where so many breaks are given. <laughs> <laughs> really? Fucking pee breaks and shit. Um 
I have to admit, I have to take a shit, but I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, But to his defense, like, about the whole shooting thing, like, um, so when I went on Saturday, um, or Saturday, Friday, um, I was talking about how there was a shooting just, uh, just outside of my house. Um, not, like, on my block, but on the block, like, two blocks over. Mm-hmm. Um... So, you know where Hawthorne Park, not Hawthorne Park, but... Um, the baseball field right yeah, the there, the racetrack? Field. Yeah, not the, not the racetracks. The baseball field. Yeah, the baseball field. Um, right next to there, that's where the shooting occurred, right? And I was standing... Eddie Col- the- that's not Eddie Cooler. It's uh, um, South Cicero? Used to be... Uh, used to be... Um, oh, used to be Hawthorne Park, but it was called something else. Gotcha, okay. So, but anyway... Um, so I was in the alleyway when that fi- oh, when the firing started, and I was actually going to go around to that area too. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to head back home. So then after Friday, after I had just talked about that, um, what's it called? That following Saturday night, I'm sitting in the garage with my dad, and me and him are chatting. Fucking gunfire was going off. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, and I'm just like, oh, fucking wonderful. <laughs> Why does that become a normalized thing in our fucking society right no now? Shit. You know? Speaking of things you're jaded about, like, especially in Chicago, around here, <laughs> dude, for sure. And you know, like, I mentioned three situations in the past couple of years in my neighborhood. There's some neighborhood where that's fucking everyday part of the soundtrack in that fucking area. You know, it's, it's probably a weird day if you didn't hear a few shit. shots pop off. That's sad, dude. Yeah, it occurred. That's that just was just right in our city. <laughs> yeah, murder yeah. is just another Wednesday. <laughs> You guys are talking about religion, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of positives about that. And, you know, it's just a lot of people are bored with it, you know, and then to, to make it worse, what, do the priests have to start doing TikTok videos or something to get the fucking younger kids interested? God, in 30 seconds, get it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> is that what we're doing now? we got to cheapen it down so they can fucking pay attention. Apparently. You know what I mean? No, Whatever. I just think that, yeah, you're right. It is, people are bored with it, but there was something to hold, it was something that I was telling these guys when you were taking a leak. Was it, it whether you whether you kept believing or whether you accepted it or not, it's still part of who you are in some capacity or another. It's some type of foundation, right? There's nothing that's replaced that or has come as a like, I agree. as a, yeah, that is a, was a second to that or a follow up for people to hold on to or kind of set that base, set that tone for people coming up now. At least that's how it feels like. I don't know, but. I don't have all the answers. I just have an idea. No, man. And it's true. I'm all about, you know, I, I talk about, you know, we don't control the world's resources, right? Like, we don't control oil. We don't control lithium or any of that shit that all these people want to kill each other over diamonds. But the, we have probably the most powerful resource that they can't control, and that's kindness to each other, how we treat each other everyday fucking life, right? And people are hurting right now, so... That's what I'm always about being positive and no matter where I go, man, whether it's the fucking Dunkin' Donuts or whatever, I know the whole staff, you know, I appreciate what they do for me and like, you, you can think about when you go into a situation, like this could be a good situation, it could be a meaningless situation where nothing really happened and you just got what you got and you walked out, it could be bad. I always choose good, man. I always choose good. It's a, it's a choice for me. And so, um, in any event, um, but how do you get everybody else to do that though? Every one secret that I feel like I just learned recently, or that maybe really just sunk in, is that every emotion is contagious. Every emotion seems to be contagious, whether it's happiness, kindness, fear, anger, jealousy, right? Mm-hmm. They, you know, it's it's all it's all contagious. So, like, you can infect it in a good way, like a positive, like it's like an immune system booster or something that you fucking give to somebody when you're kind, you know, and I don't know. I mean, I, like I'll give you an example, right? You know, yesterday I'm, I'm over here at Realty Chicago in Berlin to do a home buyer seminar. And uh, my good friend, Freddie Ocampo over there, he's uh, just one of their like higher ups, I guess, in the company. And he helped some of the younger realtors organize it. And, you know, it's just people coming there learning about the process, right? Like, what do I got to do to get qualified for a loan? You know, then you see your tax returns, bank statements, pay stubs, all this shit. And they kind of tell them about that. <clears throat> Pardon me, what credit scores you can get, you know, what will get you approved and all these things. And then, you know, I'm in there talking as well. And so these people are just there to learn. But, you know, I start off 
cracking jokes about like, oh, you know, I just had this big ass breakfast. They're telling me to eat tamales and I'm still full of fucking pigs in a blanket or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I wanted to be like Canelo for you guys today, like with the high energy levels and this and that. They were laughing, you know, and it just made a connection to people. And I asked them why, you know, why they were buying a home. And at the end, I told them those are all good reasons. You know, some of them were saying they were sick of their fucking landlord. Other people just wanted a safe place for their, you know, sanctuary for their, for their house, for their family and all this. You know, some of them was investing. Some of them was a combination. And it was good, man. It was a really positive experience. So, um, so I'm always trying to bring, like, connect with people in those ways. Connections and re- relationships are the most valuable things we have. And um, so, 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 so really, to, to answer your question, come full circle. It's just like you can infect other people with your energy. Um, and you'll see it too. If you go in there somewhere frustrated or angry, the fucking, it's going to be the same thing right back. What I want to try to see is, can I get inside, right? Will you make eye contact with me? Can we lock eyes? What am I going to do when that time happens? Is it smile sometimes or is it, Hey, how you doing? You know, and starting off on a positive note, it's like, it's almost like there's something hard for somebody to, to be mean to you when you start off being nice to them, even if they're having a fucking bad day. You know? This reminds me of that one episode of, uh, it's always sunny. When they go out into the suburbs and they don't know how to be chill. <laughs> yeah. So they're always on edge. Yeah. 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 That Just going to walk right up on us. <laughs> nice weather we're having, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to be subtle about it. You're not trying to fucking make any jump in this uh, think, city of sin we're living yeah, in. Yeah, I think part of it is that we're in a city and we kind of just like keep to ourselves more than, you know, anything. And it's, there's no, there's like, to Carlos's point, there's no community. There's no sense of communi- community. Everybody's like kind of like, watching out for themselves and shit well they say that's another thing that's changed about american life is that you know people don't live close to their family as much as they used to and they'll go to other places for work and it's been a loss of sense of community you know the bowling league or whatever the fuck right they used to bring people back together church and all this yeah and um you know we're, we're at a disadvantage because we're we now have like the first generation or two of people that are growing up that um have been influenced by cell phones and social media. And, um, you know, Dr. Phil was just on Rogan, like, last week. It was a great episode. It's, like, everything we're kind of talking about right now, and um, which I believe is important. You know, it's, it's probably some of the best stuff we could do with podcasts like these is spread the word, man, Pro- promote awareness and get people thinking about kindness and being nice and all this. But anyway, Dr. Phil starts popping off these statistics, and he says, United States is 35th ranked world in uh, in the world in math, 18th in science, and 13th in reading. So, and he says that problem of our deficit in our test scores has only been magnified by the pandemic. So, you know, we do it, we end up doing all these shutdowns, right? Everybody got COVID anyway. It's a respiratory virus. Just by breathing, you can get it. So it's it was very hard to prevent people from getting it, whether we had shutdowns or not. People are coming over. You get it from your family, whatever the fuck, right? But, you know, they they still don't really talk about the cost of what that did to everybody. And, um, you know, the, the kids suffered really bad with fucking mouths covered. They don't know how to think, you know, and, and they can't. They don't learn as well, I think, when they don't see uh, mouths moving and all that. And then they're sitting there at home. They get bored. They, you know, it's like the teacher, <laughs> when you were teaching us, right, at St. Joe's, you had a hard enough time fucking making sure we were paying attention. We were right there in our face. Never mind when you're sitting through and looking at an I, 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 t- iPad tablet or some bullshit, right? So, you know, it's interesting. We're going to see where that all goes. doing double duty because I've heard stories of, like, students, like, literally babysitting their baby brothers while they're, while they're in education. Yeah, people were more frustrated too because their responsibility load increased, but they still have to work and shit like that, you know, and so we'll see how this all plays out. I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, hopefully time will heal these wounds, but we definitely have to be very conscious about it because we've never, we as a people didn't really evolve with cell phones, right? This is all new shit, you know, it's brand new, just started happening. And so we have to really see what the effect is going to be on the younger generation. But I know, man, I, I hired... I had a young lady for a few months. We did a trial trial period, and I could see that her attention span was not the same as my other assistants, and that she had a hard time concentrating for long periods of time. And um, our brains are constantly being filled filled with bullshit, you know, on social media. And what's left after that? Your dopamine's gone, and you're fucking depressed or whatever, right? When you get off that fucking thing. So we have to deal with all those things, you know, man. It's something we're gonna have to deal with, you know. Definitely, this election. What do you think is going to happen? This election? Um, I don't know. I mean, 
Pritzko will probably win the election for the for the governor. Um, but you know, I think oh, we need to I got a question. Else. I got another one for you. Um, as far as the mayoral election, I have no idea because you you know there's like ten people running. Um, I don't. I just think that the system's broken and nobody's really going to be able to, to fix anything or really get anything meaningful done. And so, like I was mentioning about what we can do is I'm going to be starting a nonprofit called Manhood Mentors um, and kind of building it up over the course of the rest of my life. And, you know, or if that name's taken or something, I'll find a different one. But one of the guests I had on my podcast who I'll be airing the episode this week is a single mom. And she was saying like how, how it sucked to be with her son at high school graduation. He asked her, how do you tie a tie? And she's like, not only do I not know how to do this, but like, this is something you would learn from your, from a, a male role model. So I thought, thought about things like that, you know, doing video series, making them available online, you know, maybe including, you know, people that people know and just maybe even classes on the weekends for one hour. You could take courses and shit like that on how to use power tools, how to, you know, archery, fucking safe gun use, whatever, you know, how to build shit, you know, different stuff that, uh, that you don't necessarily get, you know, in school or even in the home, if you don't have a full home, you know, what yeah. was that other question you were thinking about, bro? Safety act. The what, safety act. Yeah. What can you tell us? What do you think for or against? I haven't made up my mind on it either way. There's probably a little bit of good and a little bit of bad in there, but what's the good, what's the good? Well, people need I'll it. I'll mention it. So yeah, a lot of people are really worried about it. I know, yeah. They, you know, it doesn't help that they use these 30-second political ads to scare the fucking shit out of everybody. Mm. <laughs> you don't get the context, you know, whatever. You don't know what it's all really about. Yeah. But so the Safety Act, um, you know, it just came up more recently. It's going to be effective January 1st, 2023 in the new year. And my understanding is that it's a long law. Like the, the attorney uh, in my office, we were researching a little bit. And I think he said it was over 700 pages. And like when I hear that, like in law school, they taught us good law is concise. It's to the point. It does what it needs to do and doesn't do more than it needs to do. But unfortunately, the way shit works in Congress at the federal level and Illinois and other states as well, I'm sure, is they do these big bills. Sometimes they call them omnibus bills. They're like fucking thick. It's like any senator or congressman who could have passed something, they all put something in there to try to get, oh, I got this law in my name. I'm fighting for you. The fucking thing looks like three phone books stacked together, fucking nailed together with a cross, the fucking nails they use Jesus, on Jesus or whatever, right? That That's how thick they need them to fucking, right? <coughs> yeah. And um, so with the Safety Act, I just had on attorney Claudia Bertaki from the Cook County Public Defender's Office. She works in the Felony Trial Division. She's a seasoned um, defense attorney. And um, the interesting thing is she stood up for it although the law sounds somewhat liberal, but she herself is a conservative. I used to see her political posts and shit, you know, and uh, I would see that she was clearly conservative. I know she is. And so she was in favor of it. So I'm like, okay, well, that kind of gave me a little, you know, it, it was a little more settling, right? Um, because I'm like, she's conservative and she's saying this is a, this, some of this shit is good. So when she was on the podcast, we only focused on a very specific topic. <clears throat> and that was the elimination of cash bail and reform of the bond system in Illinois. Okay. So the whole bond now, system is getting revamped? Well, what it is, is that they're taking cash out of the equation. So if you're Bill Gates and you kill somebody, you don't have like, you know, whatever. I mean, that's an extreme example because the guy's a billionaire, but you don't have a lot of money where you could post bond and it wouldn't matter. You could be violent to somebody and as long as you could post bond, you are not held in prison um, until you're your trial date right which could be a few months it could be a year it could be two years right people were dying in, in, in county jail during covid because they're waiting trial and the whole fucking system was fucked in half for a while right so the idea there the part of this safety act that's a bigger umbrella it stands for like you know equality fairness today whatever the fuck there's an acronym we talked about it on a podcast but the pre-trial fairness act is the one that deals with the elimination of cash bail so basically what they're saying now is it doesn't matter if you're just a poor dude off the street or if you're rich, no amount of money is going to get you out of prison if you're deemed to be a public threat, you know, to an individual person, which is the public at large, like the state of the people of the state of Illinois, or, if, you know, if you're just a, as, in general, you're just a violent person to society, or if you're a flight risk. 
So now the judge has to consider a lot more factors, a lot more evidence. Apparently that's the way Claudia portrayed it to me. Um, and so it's a better thing, I guess, because people that might have otherwise be held in jail until their next court hearing or their trial date or whatever can be sent home um, with conditions or no conditions, depending on whether the judge, you know, the, based on the information, what they decide. So it's supposed to take money out of the equation, which is supposed to be more fair. So if you're deemed a threat, right, like you told this person you're going to, you know, you did something or you told them you're going to do something or there's multiple factors of evidence that weigh in favor of keeping this person behind bars and the judge just, there, there's no bail. You're just going to go and be detained until um, the time of trial. So it's supposed to create some, some fairness there. Now, she was very, you know, in favor of the law and... I don't want to just jump on board with that kind of thing right away just because, you know, I, don't, I haven't heard the other side. Like, I've gotten to this point in my life right now where I always need to hear the other sides because I'm sure there's pros and cons to both things. But what what she was saying is, like, you can do electronic home monitoring. And then she started citing some studies saying that most people who are out on electronic home monitoring don't reoffend while they're out and this and that. But what we've seen in these ads on TV and the political ads is, oh, you know, they're going to be letting all the criminals out or they can now, they have the power to do that. And, you know, there's no cash bail anymore. Murderers home. They present it like when they say there's no cash bail, they don't really tell you why that's a bad thing necessarily. So, you know, it requires further explanation. But that's just one part of the law. There's reforms, I believe, in the law with police standards of uh, job duties and like how they conduct them. I think they've put an affirmative right or excuse me, affirmative responsibility for police officers to come to the aid of an, uh, a defendant or offender or an accused person that their police are pursuing um, when somebody else is attacking them. So this is like the reaction to George Floyd. Like you can't just stand there and watch the guy with his neck, you know, knee on the guy's neck until they're dead. That sounds like a positive thing, but also the police like in the city of Chicago are pretty well castrated already. So I don't know much how much more stuff you have to restrict them. The young lady who's coming on my podcast this week was part of the police officer suicide awareness march in um, Chicago in September, in the month of September, six police officers had killed themselves. I think it was the highest number uh, on record, and it happens each month, and it's it's getting worse, right? It's getting more frequent. It's becoming higher numbers, and they're short-staffed. They're canceling their hours. They're, you they're know, committing suicide? Committing suicide, yeah. Wow. Six six police officers in the month of September killed themselves. <clears throat> Damn, These are the Chicago. people from the that we know from the, the community that are tasked with keeping law and order in our society, right? Mm. To stop to stop bad guys. So apparently there's some provisions in the law about that. My the attorney in my office, Matt, you guys will meet him. He uh he was saying that there's a guarantee of bail in the in the Illinois Constitution. And so he's saying, I don't know if this will even stand up to court challenges, and I'm sure there will be some legal challenges being made in the new year once this law is effective, or perhaps they're already in the works or in the court system right now. But that's that's one thing. And then I think there was something else in there. The problem is when I hear something from somebody and I haven't had a chance to do research, I don't know how to fact check it. So I had a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, who's been a close friend of the family for many years, and she told me, I heard you're not going to be able to get somebody out of your house on cr criminal trespass anymore. That's what I heard, to too. to go through the eviction process. Yeah, that's what I if read. If that is correct, fuck that law. Okay? Yeah, you can't call the cops to get them out of your property. you got to figure it out yourself. Well, no, they can come, but they have to give a citation, So apparently. Oh. Well, that's what I heard. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Dude, fuck a citation. In policy that says that somebody who comes in my house... When I'm not there or where, I, where if I am there or whatever, and I need to fucking go through an eviction process for fucking four months to get these cocksuckers out of my property, fuck that. You know what I mean? That's bullshit, bro. When did we get to the point where that's acceptable? These fucking politicians. How did that even become a thing? Well, you know what? And the funny thing is. Yeah, what's the con and what's the pro in that? Right? It, dude, it's, it's treating fucking irresponsible people like they're the owners of the property. Property rights are one of the most fundamental fucking things we have. It says in the Constitution, life, liberty, and property. Those are the three things that they focus on, right? So, like, life, you, you're guilty of a capital crime, you lose your life, right? If you're if you're just, if it's a regular crime, you lose your freedom. You're in fucking jail. And then you have property rights as well. So, 
it's it's already like it's almost law anyway. Even if that's not in that safety act, which I have to fucking I want to research now too because I'm like, how bad is shit really getting with the policy and how it works out for regular people in Illinois? But I can tell you this: most of the time, when Chicago police officers are called to a property, if the fucking piece of shit who is squatting in the property or breaking in or taking it over says that they have a right to be there, the police say it's a civil matter and let the judge fucking weigh evidence and shit when you do a court case, right? It's fucking bullshit, bro. It's fucking bullshit. So I had a 102-year-old woman who was selling her home in Chicago. God bless her. She was a very nice lady. She had moved to Minnesota to stay with her daughter so her daughter could give her full-time care. Somebody in the family didn't want the sale to go through, but it really didn't fucking matter because it was a short sale, which means she owed more money on the home than, um, than what it was worth. And so she needed the sale. She wanted the sale to go through. I mean, not that a 102 year old woman is probably has too many reasons to be concerned about a credit score, but they wanted to do the honorable thing and get the home sold. Somebody in the family, I think it was a granddaughter, didn't want the home to be sold. So she had her boyfriend call up a security company and install steel doors and window covers around the entire house. Like, if you haven't seen them, like, you need a special tool to get them off that, like, only these companies have or something. It's like basically barricading a property. Um, there's an example like down the street from my office, there's this old firehouse that hasn't been used in years when they moved it or they got rid of that one or whatever the fuck. And that thing has this, it's, there's just two big companies in Chicago that do it. One is called Dogs, D-A-W-G-S. So if you ever see that print mark on some white paneling, that's probably one of their security doors or windows as you drive by. They do this for vacant properties or whatever. So anyway, guy takes over the property. I told the realtor, I'm like, when you're there, if that guy's there, call the cops. So sure enough, he's there one day. They're trying to get in because the buyer's doing an inspection, trying to see what the condition of the property's like or whatever. And they've got this place locked up, right? So this guy's already fucking us. The police tell him, like, this is a civil matter. You want to file an eviction? Um, we don't want to end up on fucking Fox News or whatever. So and I'm, I can hear this on the phone because my guy's got me on speakerphone while he's there with these people. Can you imagine this shit? Like, somebody could take over your property and the police won't make them leave. Like, what the fuck? Well, that's fuck, what I was going to ask you next was, what's stopping the people who own the property, like you or any one of us here, from breaking into your own house and physically removing yourself, removing them yourself? What's that legal process look like? Well, yeah, now, now that this is coming, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what the squatter might try to claim in an eviction court is it was a wrongful eviction or a, what they call like an illegal lockout. And we know how this shit works. So when I was in law school, I had a great professor, which I'd actually love to have on the podcast sometime. He was the one who taught us like, you know, personal injury and like uh, negligence law and tort law is what they call it. And he says, you have the right to defend yourself. You have the right to defend your property. Um, but with property, it's not considered like... You can't use deadly force because it's it's just, we don't value it as much as human life, right? Like, your car doesn't have as much value as George does, you know what I mean? Well, and so... That's fine. You're pulling, pulling back to punch. So you're a good man, Carl. <laughs> but um, it was about to go. He's about to give him a jab there. But um, in any event, um, where, where were we, what was oh, the no. you were well, asking? Well, like you, know, I'm not saying hold. Oh, them, about moving them yeah, out, right? Like, like tossing them out. Like if you're the owner of a bar and fucking he he holding them out, you, as opposed to like you know fucking murdering them there and then taking them out. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can just that like yeah. So the the point I was telling you about the professor is that like he said you can defend your property, but what do you think is going to happen when you try to take it back out of criminal's hands? They're going to like shove you or punch you in the fucking face, and the, it's going to escalate, right? It's going to escalate. So you know maybe it escalates in the house. But the thing is, you might end up facing fucking charges from them, too. You know what I mean? Like, I, it's it's so... Not if they're dead. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or maybe a wrongful death lawsuit well, for yeah, family. Well, yeah, because now like I'm in my own property. Yeah, I but I see you. what you're saying, yeah. I'm, I'm in my own yeah. property. And if I can defend myself in my home... Yeah. It would have to be physical. So, it like, they'd have to come at you in a threatening way or something or whatever. I can go in there strapped. Yeah, you could. I mean, honestly, if they're in your house, like usually all bets are off in terms of defending yourself. But then you're putting this the person like yourself in a position where they have to decide to use deadly force on somebody who's in the house when it really should be just a matter of the police coming over and then taking these motherfuckers out of there and telling them never to come back again. Right. So like 
Yeah, you, you have the, the, they have this thing in the law, it's called the castle doctrine, which basically your home is your castle, you can defend it in any way that you need to when you're on the inside of the home, basically. So the one thing that might not look good if the person has like bullet wounds in their back, right, because then it looks like they were running at the time, they were trying to retreat from what they were doing. So th that's another thing that's tough, right, because like, okay, could you keep on facing me for a second so I can fucking shoot you or whatever, you know, it doesn't yeah. really work out like that in real life. And you never know when these cocksuckers are done committing their crime. So, like, if they're in the act of fleeing, it's supposed to be over then. But what if they fucking come back in for some more because they know you're fucking, you think it's over and shit. It's like, come on, dude. You know, they make, they put regular people in, in these very tough positions. But uh, but to come full circle, yeah, you can you can try to take them out of there. You know, if, if you're strong, you're big, and you want to fucking rough them up, maybe you'll get away with it. But if they file a complaint or something, then you got to deal with that bullshit, and they treat, they That's favor great. them. So you're a regular citizen. You should be able to live your life and get people the fuck out of your property. And if you take action for that, you might face a claim and get caught up in that shit for a while too. And I don't know if your homeowner's insurance would cover a defense attorney free of charge. Uh, insurance companies have an obligation under law, whether it's your auto insurance company or your homeowner's insurance company in certain situations or whatever, to provide a defense attorney for you as part of the premiums that you pay. So people get worried like, well, oh, I got into a car accident. I got to call an attorney. Like, well, if it was your fault or they're claiming it's your fault, just call your fucking insurance company. Tell them you need some defense here. They got these big-ass firms that do it all day long, so they're used to doing them. They know exactly what to expect. But in any event, yeah, it's kind of fucked up, man. It, it, there should be really... Think about it. If you can think of it, you could put it in writing, right? So why can't we legislate a solution for that? And that leads me to one of the topics I mentioned. I sent some emails over. I was at this real estate speech with Alderman Raymond Lopez a um, couple weeks back. And so it's the Southwest Realty Board meeting. It's pretty laid back. It's only like 20 people or something will show up, 30 people show up to a meeting. And he's probably using this as like practice for his next political speech or whatever. Just want to work out some kinks, it's like a comedian working on their material. So we get in there, they say, uh, well, you can't record, so put your cell phones away. But this guy's fucking recording, this guy's photographer. I was asking questions, they put a cell phone on the table, I could see they were recording what I was saying. So they could probably think about what I was saying and then try to counter it later or whatever. But one of the things I suggested is, a first of all, a fucking solution. Like, the problem with guys like him, you know, like, I asked several different questions about very important topics or what I believe are the most important topics in real estate right now. And he didn't really seem to have many good answers uh, for, for any of those things. I mentioned the police officer suicide and this and that. He didn't talk about hiring more officers or any of this shit. But in any event, um, he was talking about um, what, what were we saying with the squatters or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, he he didn't really say, seem to say that he thinks that they should be removed from your from your property. Um, and I was like, dude, that should be an easy yes, I feel. Um, yeah. And the, the thing about it is, like, we should have a verification method because right now there's really no system in place. So, like, think about it. If we had a database, right, and I'm just proposing this, there's probably a lot of different ways you can have some kind of registration. But if you had a database where, like, through social security numbers and, like, you know, maybe a code or a PIN, tenants could register and the landlord could approve it saying, like, this is a legitimate person. They have a lease. They have a right to be here. And then that information can be pulled up by the police when they arrive on scene. And be like, if you don't have an ID and you don't have somebody who lives here who can verify you're a guest of theirs, you need to get the fuck out of there. And they make it seem like it's a hard solution. It's like, dude, we already have a yeah. fucking FOID database. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, you need, yeah. So you need a database to register the fucking gun owners who need to defend themselves in your own home, public transit, the fucking the street at the fucking intersection where they need to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. Make people wait nine months at a time to get a fucking FOID card like I had to wait nine months. But they can't make a database to register fucking people in there and, and have it like have a system where it's verified by the landlord or something. Think think about it, guys. Like get creative with it, figure out what would be the best way to verify and all this. Why don't we have a solution like that? And it's because for whatever fucking reason, the policy is in this soft stance and it, and it's not gonna change too easily. But I I personally am gonna be starting petitions about repealing certain laws like the Fair Notice Act. Fair Notice Act in the city of Chicago during COVID, they rewarded tenants who had been there longer with, with you having to give them longer notice. So in the city of Chicago, if the tenant had been there longer than six months in the property, but less than three years, instead of giving them a 30-day 30, 30 notice um, to leave after their lease was up or to increase the rent, you had to give them a 60-day notice. And then if the tenants had been there longer than three years, you had to give them four months notice that their rent was going to increase or that you needed them out of the property because you're renting to somebody else or you're selling the building. I went through this myself. I've been affected by the law. So I have tenants upstairs 
The bills, the fucking gas bill in February this past year was seven hundred fifty dollars, almost eight hundred bucks or whatever the fuck it was to heat that building. I need extra money. The costs are fucking going up, yeah. right? Yeah, one hundred percent. So I, because these tenants had been there longer than three years, I inherited them when I bought the building. They were already living there. Mm. I had to give them notice in May that the rent was going to increase by October. Who the fuck is the government to tell us that we have to wait that long to get our fucking money? They don't control their taxes, but they want to control the amount of money you can charge for rent and shit. That's another issue that I mentioned to, um, you know, Mr. Lopez. And the guy was like, you know, that's a state issue or that's a county issue. But then he's talking about like to try to be tough on crime, he's going to get city attorneys involved in prosecuting where Kim Fox won't at the county level and shit. I'm like, well, how about you fucking coordinate to get your tax bills out on time with the county? Because you're the biggest city within Cook County. You got almost 3 million people or whatever. It's like, the, you know what I mean? None of these people have good answers for anything. But we as good people, as young people, have to keep on speaking up if anything's going to happen. And we, we really just have to take control of the things we can. What goes on with our community, the values that we want to have, and just organizations to, to try to keep it that way, you know, in my opinion. And what I think is really like important that people really don't do is like go to those um, any any hearings or when they're gonna propose any laws or yeah, anything. like a town hall meeting or something. Yeah, because you know half the shit you see on the ballot, people don't know what what it's about. What what's going on here? You know the people that are on there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got a ton of people on a ballot. Yeah. You know, you got all these judges, and you don't, you don't even they, know who to they choose. do a retention system. You don't There's know fifty judges on there. You're like, who is this guy? I don't even know what I'm clicking on. Yeah. You know, or who is this gal? Whatever. Yeah, they, you know, and then worse still is you have the thirty second ads that you see in, during the news at night. You'll see yeah. one ad saying like, you know, pro Pritzker, pro pro Darren Bailey or whatever. And then the next one right after that is don't vote for them. They're fucking too extreme for Illinois and all this shit. Yeah. It's like, Dan what Bailey. The fuck? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have like, there you know that's even if people wanted to, it's hard to find truth now, and um, that's why like what we're doing here today is probably the most valuable thing going on in society is just regular people talking. Cause, fuck man, you know you listen to the news and how everything's going down. Like, you know, and at a, at a federal level, we got a fucking war going on in Ukraine right now that we don't know when it's going to end, and that's a problem with all these fucking things they get involved in. Is that there's no there's never an end game. They never no. talk at the beginning about well how okay we're we're gonna get they're, in but here's how we're getting out. You know, they're never. meant to to go on forever. Yeah. All these uh you know, um, weapons contracts and all these big companies getting paid. Yeah. Military industrial complex and Eisenhower warned about that years ago. You know, it's um it's a business and when war and killing is a business, you know that's a bad moral position to be in. And um so yeah I mean, you know. I'm not, like, I told my, my, uh, Matt, the other attorney in the office, I said, maybe there'd be a middle ground, right? Like, you know, we don't, as Americans, don't stand for people getting slaughtered or being unfairly attacked or, uh, attacked without pro provocation, but we don't want it to go on forever either because, you know, you got a guy like Putin, rumors are he fucking guy had cancer or something, um, and he's like at the end of his rope and things didn't really go well because they had a lot of equipment problems and shit. They didn't take care of their, their tanks and their vehicles and their convoys and they were breaking down there and all sorts of problems with them. So they were stuck and literally the Ukrainians could fucking light them up because they're just, they can't move. They're stuck. You know, they're getting stuck in the mud and shit when there was rainy seasons and whatever. And so I think we talked about that a little bit on the last time when you guys were on uh, at my yeah. office. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, so who knows? You don't want that to escalate because... How bad is it going to get? You know, do some of the other countries in Europe end up getting hit because they're collateral damage and something have gone wrong? Does fucking Putin use a nuke? You know, hopefully not. But, you know, it's like it never seems realistic to it. This shit happens. And in our society, we've seen things we never probably thought we'd see no. in the past few years, you know. That Did are you see right our, what, two episodes ago with uh, the kid from Pilsen? The kid from Pilsen? I didn't, but he's running for, like, ECPS. police uh, ECPS. ECPS. committee or something. ECPS. Yeah, commissioner. So, what did he have to say? Ah, oh, he said he he talked a lot about of uh, he's of the mindset that there should be more of a sense of community. Actually, it's uh, that position is to try to keep the uh, police force in check with police brutality and you know overstepping their their boundaries and all that. But uh, but yeah, he had, he seemed to 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 think that community had a big part to do in that because yeah because we need that we need that we, everybody's like against each other 
And it's tough, man. We face a lot of challenges, you know, getting these young people on board with being involved in person. They don't know how to do it as well as they used to. And uh, But it's nice when you see it, man. You know, all is not lost, you know. Um, I saw a young couple just when I was, you know, walk or driving up over here. You know, a guy had his arm around his girlfriend or whatever, or whatever the hell the situation was, and it just it was nice to see. So they're still good out there. Yeah, he's getting ready to get a BJ. But, <laughs> well, I mean, that's a beautiful thing too, right? You know, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of different arts in Perhaps this life. Perhaps the most beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fuck. I mean, I'd give a fucking pot of gold to have that when I was back at St. Louis back in the day, He's right? to have her eat clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? If it works, I guess, that way too, right? Because, like, you get a fucking grass-fed, grass-finished fucking cow or whatever, Pineapple. you're getting something that's a little more pure. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're eating pure, then I guess she's eating clean too. What are you going to do? <laughs> Everything's organic, baby. Everything's <laughs> organic. Yeah, all natural. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to put it in the microwave. It's already hot. <laughs> it's already hot. <laughs> <laughs> fucking A, bro. <laughs> hey, well, we really appreciate you coming on, man. It's always a pleasure having you here. Um... We look forward to having you back again and joining you on your show. What do you got going on for you? Anything you want to plug? Anything you want to say before we... The podcast. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I got a... So this week coming up will be uh, Lisa Vargas on with my co-host Tilson, Matt. And we were talking about um, resiliency as a personal quality and also about the police officer suicide awareness march in Chicago bringing attention to that. She's trying to become a police officer. Really cool person. So she'll be on this week. It's going to be a two-part because we went like three hours, so I divide them now down into like an hour and a half and release them that way. So the first one will be this week. I think I'll do the other one next week. Next week, Saturday, November 12th, I have the UFC fights in my office. You guys are welcome to come by. It'll be a good time. That's the fourth time you've invited us, and I'll say yes for a fourth time. Right. See, there you go, right? <laughs> Repetition. <laughs> So uh, then, the, earlier that day, I have two, um, a realtor friend of mine coming on with a client who just closed on a, a multi-unit property, and they want to talk about self-love and how they got to that point, you know, and things they've they've went through in their life. That's Saturday, so that'll be coming out like a week or so after that. I have this guy who's a big-time event producer in the city of Chicago. He's worked on some very large concerts and things here in Chicago. He's coming on with DJ James Dean. We're going to be talking about music in general. Oh, nice. We're going to be nice. talking about um, house music and house music in the, in Chicago. Very big, vibrant scene here. One of the biggest in the country. I'm trying to get the guys from Equine in Chicago come on, talk about clean eating. Um, and I have uh, a couple other good guys coming up. Uh, I might do a little comedy Christmas episode, a couple comedians. Nice. And then I might have... Uh, some attorneys come on. I have this lady I've been trying to get her on forever. She came from Venezuela, not knowing any English, and is now like a, you know, a well-to-do loan officer here. And I wanted to hear a story about that. So I got a lot of stuff coming up with the podcast. Just check them out. Um, and that's that's kind of it, man. I'm I'm over here doing the podcast, working nine to five, Monday to Friday, fucking grinding, you know, and even after hours, and and that's it. So, um. It was a great doing the podcast with you. There's a really cool space. I I feel like the conversation flowed very well. I'm going to feel good going about the rest of my Sunday. I'm going to go murder <laughs> some fucking Zaka tacos right now. And that's it, man. Nice. <laughs> you know? There you have it. Yeah, we appreciate it, man, all, always. so. Well, that's it for us, man. You know, Check us out, IG, uh, SOS Podcast 4. Check out the Unicorn in Human Form. You got Hattori, or what, uh, Hans Bertansky, mm -hmm. Arkham over here. So... Brian, Brian Tierney. Tierney, Plus Life University Podcast, The Blue Podcast for short. Always collabing with my fucking brothers from other mothers, SOS Podcast crew. Thank you, guys. Brian. See you next time. We love you. Peace. Brian. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>